What's up, YouTube? We're talking about how to reprogram your brain to make more money on today's podcast. You're behind the scenes. We've got Twitter live, YouTube. We're about to go live everywhere, but let's do Facebook real quick. By the way, stay to the end. Kate, what do you got to give away at the end to one person? Some money. Well, two. If you we'll do money that. during the thing. And but. a MacBook Air for someone who stays till the end. MacBook Air. Who wants a MacBook Air? Okay, look this way. What's up, Facebook? You're behind the scenes of my podcast, giving away some cash, and what are we giving away at the end, Kate? To MacBook one Air. lucky winner yesterday, a guy on YouTube, I think, won it. We're about to go live, but you're behind the scenes, and I gotta go live on Instagram. Here we go. Ready. What's up, Instagram? Instagram, giving away a laptop, giving away free money, and you're behind the scenes of my new podcast episode today. Thank you, Zach. Zach's running sound effects. We're going to be talking about how to reprogram your brain to make more money. Who, who here makes, makes enough money, doesn't want to make any more? You got to reprogram your brain. I want to be talking about this book. Actually, let me get started on the official. Are we ready to go? Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to today's podcast radio episode. We are talking about how to reprogram your brain to make more money. Yes. We've got Zach on the sound effects. <laughs> we Thank have you. Thank you. Kate is here. She's giving away a MacBook Air. We're live on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so if you're listening to the podcast, you're missing out on the, uh, the live. And we have a special guest today. Dr. Herman Garcia Fresco. He is a neuroscientist, spent 12 years studying the brain. So a lot of people talk about the brain, don't know what they're talking about. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, hold on. I can just pivot right here. Yeah, me, me and Ty are a little jealous that we don't get you the phones. You and Zach. I mean, me and Zach. Me and Zach. We don't get the phones. But I could see how you were confused. So let's, let's start talking about this book. Beat the Crowd by Ken Fisher. So, this is a stock market guy. Beat the Crowd, Ken Fisher. You probably see him in magazines. He advertises a lot. He manages like one or two billion dollars for people. Now here's the deal. This book is basically explaining why if you follow the media, if you follow mainstream advice, in his opinion, you're always gonna be making less money than you should be making, especially if you invest. Even if you're not investing, if you don't have enough money, it's still the principle that we're gonna talk about. We're also gonna talk about these brain pills right here. I'm holding a brain pill called Neuro 67. Dr. Fresco developed it, I'm an investor in the company, and I wanna talk about, does, do brain pills work? You, who's seen the movie Limitless? Me. Did you see Limitless? Yep, I did. Fun movie. Limitless. The question is now. I read. I sent Dr. Fresco some uh, a book I was reading, Super Intelligence, which I talked about in the last podcast. Yes. And basically, yeah, there it is. Thank you, Kate. Um, we were basically. This book says that the problem with brain pills is that evolution has already pushed our brains as far as you can push. One little pill is not going to make the difference. But some people disagree. So we're going to talk to. Herman on that. Can, is there such a thing as a limitless pill which would make you be able to calculate stocks quickly, would be able to allow you to see trends, would have your brain and your focus working ten Adderall. times faster? Adderall. Yeah, people <laughs> take let's talk yeah. for one second. How does Adderall work in the brain, Dr. Fresco? It what do you mean how it works? Like, like what's, what's the, the process? What is it doing that makes you focus more? It just increases um, neurotransmitter. Uh, reuptake it increases the Adderall is a drug so it's not the difference between Adderall and these kind of supplements that you're going to be talking about is that that is a prescribed drug it affects your neurotransmitter release or it affects your neurotransmitter um, uh, manufacturing process in your brain yeah so different drugs affect differently 
I'm so not, it's more powerful than just a supplement. Yes. So that's the, why you need a prescription. That's, yes. So for prescription drugs, you need obviously a doctor to prescribe it. But I'm saying, is that the limitless pill? Is Adderall no, the no, limitless that, pill? None of them are like limitless. You don't have any of them that are as good as it, as, as, as you know, the movie depicts it. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There is a lot of things in your brain that could be so much better. If you look like a, at a savant or some of those people that can... Like Rain Man. Rain Man. That tells you that your brain has the capabilities of doing stuff like that, right? So right. you can give somebody something that's like, hey, count, you know, the, like the matches or, or memorize every word in a book. They can. Your brain can. The problem is, and that's why evolution, uh, the, the book you were reading was saying that you can't really do that at this point because evolution maxed out. It sacrifices other parts. Right, like so, social skills. For example, social skills. So a lot of these people have these amazing brains that they can do these crazy calculations, but now it sacrifices the social part, or they yes. can't really hold a, a, a normal job because you know their thinking process is not there. So my take on this, or my theory, is that eventually we will be able to unlock those areas of the brain right. while maintaining, let's say, social right. You know, so yes. we won't have to trade off. Like I knew with Asperger's. Yeah, Asperger's. Yes. If you Asperger's. look at some of the most successful business people, Bill Gates, um, not Warren Buffett, but definitely Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. There, you know, I some of these like Elon Musk. I've had an interesting conversation with. He's definitely. He's. I don't know how I would describe Elon Musk. He's not complete. He was probably a nerd growing up. He's not the most socially fluent. He's a little awkward. He's not horrible. Um, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs said he had to teach himself. But he, in some ways, is not a pure savant. Herman's talking about these idiot savants. That's what they're called, technically, idiot savants, where your brain, you know, you can, there was a, I had a math teacher, Mr. Robinson, when I went to Enlo in North Carolina. And he said the way he got his wife to marry him, he impressed her. But he brought her a phone book. He said, tear any page out of this right now. So she tore a page out of the yellow, uh, the white pages. She handed it to him. He said, give it to me for, I, for one minute. And he just stared at it for one minute. Then he gave it back to her and he said, pick a number on there or a name and I'll tell you the opposite. So he, she picked the number and he said the name of the person. On a page it had, you know, 250 numbers and names and oh, I thought you were going to say he had figured out how to make a spell will you marry me oh <laughs> <laughs> thank you Zach we need the joke sound box oh okay. dang it you gotta hold the sound box I gotta box figure up. this whole thing out we're just gonna have to get a little bit more uh, Zach is learning we bought an app that allows we bought an app and a device that Zach can do stupid uh, sounds do the Scooby Doo one. Oh, I don't know what that one is what do you mean, the Scooby? The one that goes. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, I gotta go find it. That's Scooby Doo. Man, you keep <laughs> trying to scroll through this thing, and your your finger. Hits okay, let's do our first giveaway. On our this is our first giveaway. Somebody said this country is retarded because weed is illegal. Herman, as a brain scientist, and we're we're gonna be talking about how to uh, improve brain functions so that you can make more money, you can do better, have better career, all this. Do you think marijuana, it, this person on YouTube said that one of the big problems in America is that marijuana is illegal. Do you think weed is good for your brain or not, or neutral or bad? Well, marijuana has its good implications and bad implications, right? So me personally, I say I'm neutral. It's like I let people, I mean, there's lots of bad drugs out there like cocaine, for example. You know, you say you can take cocaine, what does and, cocaine do to the brain? That one's rougher on your brain because it passes well, the blood brain. Cocaine really down. targets your reward centers. It increases your dopamine um, yeah. flow. And you burn, but you can burn out dopamine, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like ecstasy. When people take one ecstasy pill, I heard it takes almost a year for your body to recover the well, natural dopamine. Uh, what happens with the brain is if you flood it with too much excitement, right? So let's say in the case of cocaine or heroin or whatever. Um, your brain knows that that's not normal. So okay. what happens is this, it starts telling the brain at the DNA level, 
yeah. that says, hey, we need to stop producing these dopamine receptors because they're getting flooded and they're getting overexcited. So what happens, They produce the brain produces less. So then when it produces less, Right. Now you, you require depressed. no. Now you require a higher dose. Yeah. Right. That, that's why these addicts, the same as steroids. A guy who thing. takes steroids, basically your balls stop making the same. So that's why guys also have to take another pill so their balls don't shrink, yeah. because your body says we don't need it. Your body's very efficient. You basically become desensitized. Yeah. And what ha- again? What people don't understand is that now you are at the you're affecting your brain at the DNA level, which means you're now changing the structure of your cells. Yeah. So taking drugs is not good because of stuff like that, right? So then what happens is it takes about, now your brain under is very smart and can recuperate, but what you do in a few months with cocaine, it takes, like you said, six months to a year to come back to its normal levels again. So. Yeah. Highly not now. What about let's talk about this because me and Kate always argue over alcohol. Because alcohol, okay, one of the here's the thing that I'll say this is my opinion on marijuana. They say, wine. if I had to live in a country, if I had to live in a country that had people smoking weed or people being, I just read a report today, I sent this to Kate. One in 12 Americans Mm. is now officially diagnosed as an alcoholic. Pull up that on your WhatsApp. What? <laughs> pull that. Pull that up. I want to see what study. It. But just think about. I it. prefer people on weed. Oh yeah, like oh, if you own night. Yes. When we used okay, to own stop, stop. Uh, nightclubs, people smoking weed. Pretty much, there's no Take fights. Advantage. There's nothing. So I think that here's my my experience with marijuana. If you want to make more money, I'll tell you my experience about reprogramming the brain. Sell it. Two, yeah, sell marijuana. No, don't. Zach Randolph, the NBA player, might never be able to play in the NBA because he had two ounce, two pounds of marijuana. When was that? He got arrested a few days ago. <laughs> he now plays for the Sacramento Kings. So my experience with marijuana is that it it makes it harder for me to think as a businessman. I, it makes numbers harder to do. I, if you look at a guy like Snoop Dogg, he smokes all the time, and for his career, which is being a creative artist, it's worked very well, you know? What study was that? Uh, the Washington Post. No, but I think the Washington Post is quoting somebody else. Here it is. Oh yeah, a new was, study published in JAMA Psychiatry Journal. This oh. month finds that the rate of alcohol use disorder, or what is colloquially known as alcoholism, rose by a shocking 50% in the last 10 years. 12.7% of America Re- meets diagnostic criteria for al- being an alcoholic. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now here's another thing. Um, people, Kate mentions like, oh, a glass of wine a day. There are studies done on the brain that show that even a glass of wine a day is not good for you. Yeah. There is these. Uh, there's a doctor called uh, Dr. Amen from Amen Clinics. I'm sure you heard of him, and if you haven't, look him up. But uh, he is a, a pioneer on brain scans, and what he found is that even people that are drinking one glass of wine a day, you can see disruption in the brain. Now people say, now wine does have stuff that's beneficial for, yeah, for you. your heart and stuff for like your heart, that. Yeah. And it has, um, but it messes uh, up your brain. Yeah. That it's good for anti-aging. So what I tell people is, I say, well, if you want those benefits, there is fruits and other things in diet that you can get the same benefits and you can leave away the wine or just don't drink every single day yeah like Zach. But, but how, how i got a good <laughs> i got a good zach story about how alcohol. else am i supposed to w- get the girl back to my place if not for this alcohol well you can use it for her but not on you oh i like the hermon <laughs> that. yeah, right. that's horrible uh, here's a good story about alcohol so kate you'll like this about um you're making me sound someone said <laughs> someone said this doctor sounds like a quack no he's a real phd <laughs> uh, one thing about Hermont, he's from argentina so his english every once in a while he picks funny words english is not his first language but he did get his phd in the u.s also he didn't get it at google devry <laughs> university <laughs> DeVry, or, uh, university, university of Arizona. barbados no no, no, no offense to Barbados. university of phoenix um somebody said my kids are geniuses <laughs> Okay, well that's good. Um, so her, Zach, I did a party. Zach moved out to Los Angeles from North Carolina. 
be ready with the sound effects for this. <laughs> this is a good alcohol story. <laughs> so we're we're are you okay with me telling the story? Or are you gonna be butt hurt? No, no. I mean, I've told the story. I think it's funny. He, it's he, more than seven years. So I do a big house. I used to throw big house parties. I have another house in the Hollywood Hills, and um, so I would say I don't know how many people. About five hundred people used to come over the night to these parties, and it's hard to get up there. It's these windy roads. So Zach comes, and I noticed that he's drinking more than usual. He's drinking, and all of a sudden... And I was mixing. I was drinking more scotch. <laughs> he always, yeah. he he always wants to gin. justify why he got sick. Like before beer, you're in the clear. No, there's a, there's a reason for it. There's a legitimate... Kate has a lot of wisdom to impart to you around alcohol. <laughs> no. It's like, if you want to reprogram your brain to tr make more money, do not be an alcoholic. But, so Zach goes, and he... he uh, is drinking and being more and more talkative, and then all of a sudden he's outside, and I'm out high. I'm outside. He's out high. And uh, no, I'm out. I'm outside, and I notice he looks like he's about to throw up. And he was in uh, at my front door, like literally. I'm like, do not throw up on my front patio. So I said, go down the street and just throw up in the bushes somewhere in the in the, like little wildlife area. <clears throat> That, oh, that, that was Zach's sound effect. So Zach goes, and I forgot about him. So about an hour later, I see Zach. <laughs> I can see him kind of from the side. He Zach used to have a huge beard. And, That's why I cut it. Yeah, and he's talking to all these girls. And I can <laughs> notice that their faces was like a little bit like, ugh. And I walk up to Zach. No, I started to come into your house is when you stopped me. No, you were talking to somebody, I remember. And he had vomit chunks all in his beard and didn't know it so he was approaching women <laughs> how to not get a woman have chunks of vomit steaming vomit in your beard and it was on my pants and it was on his clothes and he didn't I no idea. and here's the funny part Zach was so embarrassed he basically <laughs> moved back to North Carolina no, after that yes true. you did that's not why you did you? It's just coincidence that within a month or two you moved back to North Carolina. No, no, that, that was when I first got into town. I was here for a few years, for a couple of years. You went home quickly. <clears throat> no, no, I just I actually stopped drinking for for a while. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm not, I'm not touching that stuff Why'd anymore. Why'd you retake it up again? It's too bad that there's. Of, it's too bad that there's not Snapchat. Article? Me too. Uh, Snapchat back then. I wasn't oh, on Snapchat. Yeah, no, if we had Zach's, no record of that. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have just been talking to him. Like, so Zach, how's it working with the lady? Oh, yeah. They seem to not. Do I have they, something they, on my shirt? Tie. Forgot. It's been <laughs> they don't even let me finish my intro. They just walk away. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this book for a second. Beat the Crowd by Ken Fisher, famous investment advisor. I'm going to read to you some interesting things. He basically says a couple points that you can walk away from on this podcast. The number one thing, he talks about being a contrarian, so going the opposite of the crowd. So thinking differently than most people, uh, but he talks about the dangers of always taking the opposite position. He said sometimes, let's say this, I'm going to give you a perfect example. Right now, Bitcoin. Did anybody see the news today in Bitcoin? Let's look it up. The current price of yeah, like 2, or Bitcoin is, let me look here, Bitcoin today. Yeah, no, it's, what'd you say, Ramon? About 2000 $4,000 oh, wow. and four cents right Last now. Last month was about 2000 That's crazy. One Bitcoin. So it's wow. doubled. There's people, I mean, Bitcoin started, I think I have a friend that said he started with Bitcoin at like 15 bucks or something like that. Well, Dodi, Seven bucks. Dodi started with Bitcoins when it was less than that. It was like two, three dollars. Yeah. So, but here, I'm going to make a prediction for you guys right now. I'm doing it on camera. He's recorded. What goes up must come down. And the problem is when too many people, the crowd, jumps into an idea you have to reprogram your brain <coughs> to start asking serious freaking questions now bitcoin over time most likely or these cryptocurrencies over time over the next 10 years are going to go up i would say just because you have what's called inflation in the world meaning the prices of things go up from the 1930s your average salary was like eight grand and now the average salary is like 
50 grand. That's inflation. Um, but there's going to be some serious drops. Mark my words. I called this on gold. I had some friends about four, <clears throat> probably in like 2012. I can't remember the exact year. I had the, uh, the I was doing a lot of like business networking at my house. I'd throw these parties and these guys came and they were so excited and bullish on gold. And they're like, trust me, gold, 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 gold. And I told them over time, over the next 50 years, gold will always go up because of inflation. But if you need your money on a certain day of the year, like Christmas. November 12th, <laughs> yeah, December 25th for Christmas, and that might be the day that Bitcoin drops. And anybody who doesn't understand that is a newbie to the world of investing. They, I, I remember I had a, a, one, of my, one of my mentors was a guy named Walter. He had made almost a billion dollars in real estate. He's one of the guys who pioneered nursing homes in America. People don't realize there used to not be nursing homes. He really started, I think he built the first one in the United States in the 1970s. And I was talking about real estate and I was, you know, still learning and I was like, well, real estate always goes up. He built big skyscrapers. He built huge apartment complexes. He said, Todd, let me tell you something. Real estate does not always go up. He goes, I remember in the 1980s, I built an apartment, like a huge tower. Okay, this guy built towers, like 80 floor towers, not little, pro little duplexes. He said he built a whole series of things either in Dallas, Texas or in Houston. And he said, crash came, if you guys, re if you remember, know history, and I think it was, what year was it, Zach? Zach's good with years. I think it was 1984 when you had the uh, savings and loan crisis. Um, Can you look that up? Yeah, yeah. I think it was 84. And he said, real estate went down so much, no one was renting anything. He literally, this is mind blowing, he bulldozed it. A tower. You know, and I said, why'd you build those? He said, well, for years I had to have security there. No one was renting it. We couldn't quite finish it. The financing fell out. And he said, dude, we had homeless people moving in and squatter rights. So we literally, you know those balls that you like see where these huge wrecking balls destroy? Yeah. <laughs> so there's that, and that's a real asset. That's not even like gold or, or Bitcoin, which are more, you know, commodities, so to speak. They're more electronic goods. Obviously, Bitcoin is completely electronic good. There is no printed Bitcoin. So anything can go down, and it goes up and down. Somebody said, Ty, you don't understand crypto. Yes, I fucking do. You're just an idiot. You don't understand what I'm saying. Whoever commented that. That's it a, says it started in That's somebody on Twitter. Saving loan was in 1980. It started in 1980. Yeah. It went into the 90s. Yeah. Which brings me up to another thing, number two. This guy here on, on Twitter, I don't know who this is. But the world is full of morons, especially when the subject of money. One of, my, one of my business partners, a guy named Alex, he's the CEO of MentorBox, a company we co-founded in, in last, early last year, and it's now a big company. It's the biggest book shipping company club in the world right now. It's like the Netflix of books, basically, we built it as. And he's a smart guy. He's got a PhD. He went to Berkeley. He worked for his first job was for NASA. He came number two in the world at 14 in the world math competition in Norway. This dude ain't dumb. Wow. And we were talking about finance. And he, we both had the same conclusion, even though I live in LA, he lives in San Diego. He's like, nobody understands money. Nobody, like basically fucking nobody. That's why that guy who's on this saying he understands cryptocurrencies because he read three articles in fucking Fortune magazine or something. You don't understand cryptocurrencies either. Because nobody does, because cryptocurrency is constantly changing. It's constant changing. It's you can't understand things that are so new that there's no track record. How the hell are you gonna know what cryptocurrency is gonna do? You could have government regulation come in and change things. People are very naive, and people get so excited about subjects that they don't. It's the same with the brain, Herman. As a brain scientist, how often do you see people talking about the brain and it's literally, like even in the media or articles, it's just completely... Especially now. It's like, now it's a, it's a fad. The brain, everything's brain. brain what are some of the things you've heard people say that is just clearly wrong? Uh, the 10% the rule. Oh, we only use 10% of our brain, for example. 
that's a that's I'll false, you, right? It's false. Yeah, you use a hundred percent of your brain. Yeah, because that's so easy to prove. So people are gonna argue. Yeah. It's because well, okay, if you only use ten percent of your brain, let me take nine. Let me cut yeah, your head exactly. open and pull ninety percent out. You'll be brain dead, buddy. Exactly. What it is, I think, what is more accurate to say is all parts of your brain don't fire on every single subject. Exactly. Like, so you might be using more of this when you play chess versus when you read a book versus when you're start scared by, we're gonna go see Annabelle, the scary movie. Yeah. You know? And then what happens when you develop certain techniques, like you said, piano. So let's say I, you play more piano than I do. Yeah. So there's areas of your brain that will light up and are gonna be used more than mine. What part of the brain is more musical, you know? There is no more musical. Again, that's another myth where it's like the left and right brain, another big myth. It's like the creative people are the right brain people and then the- Because everybody logic. uses the right and the left. Here, same example, if I cut your brain in half, there is a the corpus callosum which joins both hemispheres. If you cut it in half and you say, okay, now you disjoin them, You'll the creative, die. You know, and you won't die. You still survive. There's people that survive because there's surgeries that require that. But what I'm saying is now it's not like, oh, now he's only more creative or only more. It, it doesn't happen. There's a communication between both hemispheres at all times. Now, what happens is there's certain areas in the left side of the brain that might be processing, let's say, language. Yeah. And there's some areas in the right side of the brain that's processing, you know, like picture painting. But it doesn't mean that. The right brain is the right. one exclusive. You know, yeah, it's not. It's yeah. like a constant communication. Yeah, there's no exclusivity. That's so anyway, going back to this book and the first thing if you're writing this down, number one, be very, very cautious who you listen to. So let's talk about the subject of Bitcoin. The second every one of your friends and every tweet is gung ho on Bitcoin, it is a guaranteed potential problem not everybody can see opportunity so you just don't I'm not saying you shouldn't do Bitcoin I'm just saying mark my words the people who love Bitcoin there's gonna be some people between now and the next few years that are gonna be mad at Bitcoin it's just how the game goes you know so Bitcoin if you want to get into Bitcoin here's my advice to you go out and reprogram your brain to be different than the crowd by training your brain on Bitcoin. So go out and attend the cryptocurrency uh, conferences that are being put on now all around the United States. Go out, find books that are on both sides. This is the key thing. So number two, to reprogram your brain, you must become excited to listen to your opposition. That's very <laughs> important. You, the smarter, it's the mark of an intelligent person that they're will. I think Aristotle said that the mark of an intelligent person is somebody who's willing to consider both sides. So you need to, let, let me just Google this. I'll give you an example. All of you people who hate, if you hate Bitcoin, you need to learn how to love, why you should love Bitcoin and vice versa. So let's just look this up. Um, Anti-Bitcoin. Uh, let's just see what comes up. Anti Bitcoin, and I'll just look. What special effects? Why, yeah, we need some special effects. Right. Come on, Zach. Why, I'm just putting it why you shouldn't invest in Bitcoin. Here we go. Four reasons I'll never invest in Bitcoin. This is just an article from Motley Fool by a guy named Sean Williams, June 14th, two months ago. So, Here's a long article. We're not going to go through the whole thing. He says the reasons why he'll never buy Bitcoin, it's anonymity is its own worst enemy. And he goes through a long argument why. Security is a major concern. There aren't reasonable ways to invest in it. Most people don't understand it. 10 stocks we like better than Bitcoin. Okay. Now, then you should read the other side too. You must be reading both. That some of your brain is reprogram I'm gonna tell you number one reason most parents are stupid I'm gonna go on record parents ruin the fucking world people love their parents and that's okay but parents ain't living up to their job because for the last 10,000 years parents have been spitting out 
stupid damn kids <clears throat> that then all of society has to take care of. Damn. Thank you, Zach, for that sound effect. <laughs> No, it's true. Society's been pushing out. Eight, people, they got 18 years to train their damn kids. 18 years. You got from birth, okay, assuming you got, you know, normal situation. You got birth to 18. People coming out, they don't know what I'm saying right now. You know why? You ever been around, I've been around white trash. Okay, I lived in North Carolina. I lived in a mobile home for years i've been around white trash and i've been around the ghetto i've been around both and one of the things that white trash parents like i had a friend he lived in, we had a friend they live in mobile home zach knows him too joe oh and we had a friend and it was the definition basically of white, white trash nice family i'm not disparaging them but trust me, do you think at dinner time when they were eating their microwave fucking <laughs> and cocoa puffs for breakfast, lunch and dinner, do you think that the parents were like, you need to be well-rounded in your approach to understanding financial investments. They didn't even know what this, if you would ask their mom and dad what the damn stock market was, they probably <clears throat> thought it was, you know. <laughs> Lego. Some place where you buy it. <laughs> <Yeah. food laughs> <doesn't laughs> Is that a row at Food Line? Yeah, so... White trash, okay, produces a lot of damn un uh, 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 humans with very closed minds. If you don't believe me, look at Charlottesville right now. Because if you had a great conversation in Charlottesville, today the riots are getting worse as far as I can tell. But now it's happening in Seattle. Okay, did you see Seattle had a big riot thing? <laughs> well, it's the funniest thing at one of these today. One of the um, anti, or one of the white supremacist guys who led the whole Charlottesville, he tried to give a talk. Did you see that? No. Boy, man, he had riot cops running off. But somebody had a trombone <laughs> and was playing it every time he would try to talk. I just thought that was great. I think uh, you should send Zeke up there as a correspondent for the Tyler yeah, Woods Media. We have Zach network. dress up like a white trash person. Yeah. Let me do it. I'll go up. I'll go up to Seattle as Zeke. And... What's the sound effect for Zeke the white trash? I, man? I got. I got to look through these things. There's no redneck saying. No, here we go. This cool is Zeke. No, that's Italian. <laughs> that's Italian. Italian. That's the opposite of white <laughs> trash, man. All right, Kate. Let's do a quick giveaway while Zach found. I'm sorry. I don't mean to hit these. It's just fine trombone. Fine trombone. Your finger hits the button. Okay. Let's do this right here. First person to get this. Who wants to uh, videotape this so we don't miss it? Is that feedback just in the headset? It's not in the actual mic. I, I don't hear it in okay. those two. It's probably my stupid thing here. Okay. Let's do, for 100 bucks. this is my version of Jeopardy. Let's do uh, history. Let's say what year was the year that the savings and loan crisis in the United States happened? Begin. <laughs> Someone said 1953. Nope. Right there. Jason. Jason got it. Jason, come again. One more time, Jason. Post. We'll be looking. We'll be filming you. You gotta watch these two are fast. Jason something or other is the winner on Twitter. There he is. Hi. We got you, Jason. 1980. That was a big. Now what happened back then? Let's talk about this. Number two. If you want to re or number three, I think we're on reprogramming your brain. So 100 bucks. I just mentioned it. <laughs> Kate, who who we sent in 100 bucks? Jason. By the way, you stay to the end. We got a MacBook Air. Where is it, Kate? Okay. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you need to do for the white trash one. We got a Howard Dean uh, running for president sound effect where he goes, hi -ya! All right, let's do a quick questions um, for a second, and then we're going to go back to the subject of how to reprogram your brain. We're going to be giving more money away. Mm. We're giving more laptops away. Um, someone said, damn it. My IG lags. Someone said Howard Dean is an MD, you moron. Okay, Prime, this is a white trash person. Twitter is white trash land, don't worry. <laughs> Howard Dean was a presidential candidate. 
he might have additionally done other things in his <laughs> life. But, he a doctor. <laughs> what year was Howard Dean? Zach will remember. That was 04. 04. He that ran for president, president and he, did he get past the... He was just in no, the primaries. Yeah, it was just primaries. Just in the primaries. And he yelled, hey Like that, <laughs> and that basically got him ostracized. No, Twitter is not real and raw. Twitter is Dumbo land. There's a few smart people on Twitter and YouTube and stuff, but no. Come on, man. If that's what you consider intelligent people, you ain't never been around intelligent people. Okay. Let's go back. Oh. Oh, well. Someone said, is, is Katie, is she, Katie looks bored as fuck. <laughs> Are you bored, Kate? No, I'm not. Why does everyone say that? It's, it's just because, my face goes. I'm just. She has a RBF sometimes. What's a RBF stand for, Zach? RBF. Oh, when a woman has an RBF face. It's it's like a, a yeast thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> she has a yeast face. No, no, no. Oh, He's oh, oh, the acronym. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about a condition. Yeah, the resting bitch face. Resting bitch face. No, I don't have that either. I just. I don't know. They're noticing, Kate. <laughs> All right. Next thing, let's talk about if you want to so make. Just said she's just chilling. Yeah, I'm just chilling. If you want to make more money, and you want to reprogram your brain, one of the things you're gonna have to understand is the banking system. So let's talk about the banking system for a second. Now, I'm sure white trash comments, and and not to just say white trash because I don't want to be anti-white because I also live. <laughs> I also played basketball and was around the ghettos too, which are equally as messed up as white trash, in my experience. They're just different. White trash is a little, is, <laughs> white it's, a, it's cultural. No, it's but cultural. I'm just saying, it, the get, like I grew up playing basketball in housing projects. My best friend, Leon Champion, was selling cocaine when we were in high school and he ended up dying in prison in North Carolina. Um, and and he and I would stay with him in the projects, and they were real projects. They had literally zero food. I remember it was the first time in my life I spent the night at my this my one of my best friends in high school, Leon Champion, and uh, and I went to I woke up in the middle of the night and I was hungry, and I went down in his kitchen. I opened the fridge. There was mustard. I'll never forget. <laughs> there was a thing on mustard. I opened every cupboard. The next day I was like, Leon, where is the damn food? He goes. I only eat Monday through Friday when I get free lunches, and then on the weekend, I just scavenge for food. I mean, his mom had zero money. So that's the ghetto, is different problems. You got more stuff, in my experience, with, um, well, usually, the white trash, in my experience, there was a dad around more. So there might be married. Um, inner city, something like, I forget the statistics, like, 80% or 90% of people in the inner city, especially in the projects, don't know their dad. So that's different. White trash, in my experience, had a mom and dad around. Now and that they, they also have the benefit of uh, the privilege, the white privilege. Zach's trying to stir up controversy. No, but the white trash was more, the, the husband and wife were married, but they were like beating each other up and throwing each other out of the window. So as I said, uh, uh, poverty creates, on a serious note, poverty creates tremendous problems and at, some at, of it's mental. At the brain level, if you're malnourished or you have traumatic life experiences, you're not going to develop a bright brain. I mean, I'm going to simplify So even if you down. have enough food, but just the trauma. The, yeah, yeah. Trauma. Okay. What does trauma do to the brain? Well, many things. But um, I'm actually writing the, the book that I hopefully I'll be finishing by the end of the month. It has a whole chapter about that particular topic. But what's an example it could do? Would it thicken a part of your brain? Would it shut off a part of your brain? Does it make it hypersensitive? I mean, I know one thing. The amygdala stores your fear, trauma, <clears throat> memories, and it's hard to get rid of those. And that's yeah. where you get post-traumatic syndrome disorder. Yes. That's where PT yes, you're absolutely correct. Now, again, trauma, if it's trauma where you've been violently Hurt, yeah, like, like a kid or beaten like up, or beaten something. up and thrown against the walls. Yeah. Now you're creating, yeah, lots of problems. You're actually damaging brain cells. If it's traumatic experiences, like emotional trauma. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is you raise the levels of stress, like yeah. highly. I mean, if a child was uh, raised in a very traumatic um, environment, yeah. his levels of cortisol yeah. are 
forever high, you know, and he's always alert and that doesn't allow him to develop other areas of the brain because he's always like going into this flight or mode, fight, fight, or, flight. fight or flight mode, um, and it affects uh, normal development. Yeah, so. there was, I read an article that they took identical twins, so they had 99% the same DNA and the, and the children, one went into a family, it wasn't on purpose, yeah. they didn't do it on purpose, but one went into an abusive, <clears throat> bullied, one was bullied and one wasn't. And the bullied one for the rest of her life, it was two women, for the rest of her life had higher cortisol levels. Oh, yeah. And if you have too much cortisol, it messes with your body. Kate is falling asleep. Kate, a lot I'm of people are, a lot of people's eyes are on you if you look like you're sleeping. I'm not there. sleeping. Kate's brain has been traumatized. Okay. No. Somebody said, Ty, I just sold my house. I'm 25 and I now have $100,000. What should I do with it? Well, the first thing is in real estate, if you've made a hundred grand profit, you can <coughs> flip the money into another real estate property so you don't have to pay taxes. So in the United States, there's special laws, okay? There was an act that's called 1031. In insurance, it's called 1035 exchanges and the government basically said if you're exchanging one thing of value to another thing of value directly we'll give you a tax break and so if you may if you own a house for 200 grand and you sell it for 400 grand as long as you quickly transfer it <coughs> into a four hundred thousand dollar house they won't make you pay tax on the profit capital gains or anything you get to delay it there's different kind of 1031 exchanges they give you different time frames, but months or less, depending on what you do. 1035 exchange is for annuities, life insurance, they've got that. So let's go back to this for a second. Let's talk about banking. So here's the deal with banking system. A lot of people think the Rockefellers run the world. A lot of, things th a lot of people think that the Federal Reserve is an evil entity. Um, it's an oversimplification. It's not quite that simple. There's no Illuminati. There's no one group of people that run the banking system of the United States. It's very complicated. In fact, somebody, here we go. I told you. This guy's name's Muppets of the Day on Twitter said Rothschild run the world. Okay? That is just That's not true. true. It is not true. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kate is now defending the Rothschild. <laughs> the Rothschilds do not run. Do you know how big, even if you had Bill Gates' net worth, Bill Gates is worth almost $100 billion. He can't change the stock market. I mean, he could change it by talking about Microsoft, but if he takes his money in or out, how big is the stock market? Let's do this. Let's do a 100 buck giveaway right here. For somebody who knows, I'm gonna tell you right now, the most accurate, um, I'm gonna, let me pull it up so I have it because it changes every day. And we'll do just, for, let's do global because I, I know I got a people here in a, probably at least 50 countries listening in. Um, Let's see. So here's the question. First person to answer this. Well, let's just do the largest stock market exchange. This is as of February, so it's not the most accurate. What the total market cap of just the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. That's not counting NASDAQ. That's not counting the smaller commodity boards, Chicago. That's not counting the Australian exchange and the Japanese exchange in the, you know, Hong Kong and Germany. How big is just, as of February 17th, because that's what came up here, whoever guesses it, the total market cap of that. <laughs> Somebody's saying 21 trillion, someone said 50 billion. I don't see it yet. Oh wait, is that it? You see it? There we go. Yeah. Alex Cho, congratulations on YouTube. I'll be PayPaling you one hundred dollars. As of February seventeenth, it was at eighteen point five trillion. So even one man, A.K.A. Bill Gates, the richest man. Now remember, he doesn't have ninety-two billion dollars in a bank account. 
That's his total net worth. And most of his net worth is held in stock at Microsoft, which he could not even sell. Because if, my, if Bill Gates sold all his stock, people it would panic. freak people yeah. out and the <laughs> price would drop. So he'd sell his first share for this and then it would drop, drop, drop. So he does, but let's just say he had 100 billion cash, which he doesn't. The New York Stock Exchange alone is 19.5 or 18.5 trillion. So how much more is a trillion? Then, a, well, Bill Gates has a 100 billion, let's say. A trillion is 10 times that, times 18. So even, Bill Gates is not even one hate 180th of the New York Stock Exchange. So how could one man or one family, the Rothschilds, affect this? People aren't, this is why I said the world is so stupid. People can't, sometimes, you know how I figure shit out? Very similar, there's different kinds of logic. There's one called a priori logic, a posteriori logic. So I don't know if you remember, I didn't go to college, but I read college textbooks. They teach this in critical thinking. So some things are self-evident truths. For example, we could say that it's self-evident truth, basically, that you need all of your brain, and we prove it by saying who here, who think, who's arguing that you only use 10% of your brain, who here is willing to cut 90% of their brain out and think they'll still be functioning well. So it's simple logic. If you can't cut, if you take any part of your brain out, for the most part, you are going to be fucked up, right? Yeah. I mean, who here wants to just go, you know what a lobotomy is? That's what they used to do in the 1950s when you were crazy. They didn't used to give you Zoloft. They didn't used to give you, you know, uh, Ambien or whatever. Uh, they used to cut open the front part of your brain, remove it, and people would be permanently like, uh, you, you can see old YouTube videos that they recreated in movies, walking around these insane asylums, they called them, and people were just like, uh. And so, self-evident truth. Well, it's also self-evident truth that no one person is powerful enough when the New York Stock Exchange alone is 180 times bigger than the wealthiest man in the world, just the New York Stock Exchange. If you do global... Even I, if you combine the top 10, you can still not... Oh, no. Dude, the total GDP, and it, there's different ways to measure, is probably between 50 and $100 trillion. The Rothschilds do not control that. It's just not possible. For example, who here's life's been affected by the Rothschilds? That you know of. Obviously, it's possible they're doing a covert activity. <laughs> they're not. When it, and this book here, we're talking about this book for those of you coming in. It's called Beat the Crowd. Um, it, one of the things that he talks about here is that these markets, I mean, these bankers get it wrong. So if the Rothschilds are so smart... They would want, in general, to be able to move the markets in the correct directions because one of the theories is that what the Rothschilds will do or what these, the Federal Reserve will do is they'll change the stock market change, so that the economy benefits them and hurts everybody else, right? Well, they get it wrong. There's something called quantitative easing, not to get too complicated because all the white trash and, <laughs> and the dumbasses that aren't white, not just to pick on white trash, but but the, the non-white trash too, the all-color trash that's on Twitter, before you get bored, because I'm talking about trash. quantitative easing. Yeah, the Asian the trash. Latin trash. <laughs> um, yeah. Quantitative easing got it, according to this book, got it backwards. Remember how they're lowering the interest rate to help the gov economy? Remember in like 2008, yeah. the government lowered the interest rate because they wanted to free up more cash. Well, Ken Fisher in this book says it has the opposite result because the different, not to get too technical, but basically here's how a bank basically works. And it's definitely more complicated than this, partly because they've added crap load of regulations and stuff, but basically the bank has short-term lending rates and low-term. So when you put your money right now in your Bank of America, your Chase, your HSBC account, they're paying you, let's say, half a percent interest, very low, okay? That's their cost. They have to pay you half a percent. 
Now, if you go to buy a house, you might borrow money from Bank of America. They lend it to you. And let's say a house right now is roughly 5% interest. So the difference between the short-term interest rate, which is very low, almost getting close to 0% at one point. Remember when you got no money on your bank account? Yeah. I remember one time when I had much money, I had money in bank account, and they send you a statement. It's a 10, it's, like 10, it's a, uh, what is it? A, um, 1099i you get these for your taxes at the end of the year and it was for like seven cents yeah. or some 70 cents or seven dollars some teeny i was going that's how much money the bank had to pay me that's their cost now they lent out my money if you put one thousand dollars in a bank guess what they do they basically lend it to somebody who wants to buy a house or start a business and they're they're start they're basically charging mm, five six percent so they're 10 xing what they pay you so the problem is when you lower short-term interest rates okay it flattens what's called the yield curve so it, it the long and short of it it didn't work in 2008 america went into damn huge problems i think was it six million people who lost their homes in 2008 was evic were evicted or forced into bankruptcy so the bankers aren't even that much smarter than you and I. So the damn Rothschild ain't smart enough. The global economy, uh, I'll tell you one last story. Who here knows the story of LTC, long-term capital, LTCM, long-term capital management. Long-term capital management was a company. Zach, look up the years since you know yours. I believe it was in 90, it was when Clinton was president. So they decided they would bring together the most PhDs in history to start an investing company. It was called Long-Term Capital Management. And these were the geniuses of the world. I mean, literally, the levels of, it was Nobel Prize winners, it was uh, you know econ economists from University of Chicago and Harvard and all these geniuses. These dudes come together and they start betting what the market's gonna do. So they start basically you can bet, it's very much like, I'm, I'm looking today at Conor McGregor tickets to go to the Conor McGregor. By the way, let me, let me Snapchat this real quick. Um, it's 98, says. 98, yeah. You guys are missing it. We're live here on my podcast. We're talking about how to reprogram your brain to make money. Got a neuroscientist here talking about your brain. I'm talking about the Rothschilds, Bitcoin. So go on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, live, or watch my podcast. This will be out in a couple days. We're recording it now. Okay, so long-term capital management comes together. 1998, it all came to a head. They made all these huge bets, just like you can bet on Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. There's going to be a lot of money exchanging hands, boy. A lot of people are betting. Right now, the odds are down. It's much closer between Floyd and it's like minus 500 and plus 335 or something like that on Floyd versus Conor McGregor. Okay, here's the deal. They got it wrong and almost crashed the entire world economy. Literally, um, the United States government had to step in. See, usually the government won't step in. They had to step in and save the, I think Warren Buffett, Somebody came to Warren Buffett and said, do you want to save these guys? He's like, hell no, even I can't save them. And he was one of, the, I think he was the richest man in the world there. So my point is, the markets are so complicated that there's no way the Rothschilds are smarter than long-term capital management, which had 40 or how many, look up long-term capital management, how many PhDs did they have? It was the most, it wasn't just PhDs. It was Nobel Prize winning economists. These are the damn geniuses of the universe. Someone said Kate's trying to stay awake. <laughs> no, Kate yeah, I think where people, does listen. I think where people go wrong with the Rothschild or, or Rockefellers and whatnot, it's not so much that they're controlling the economy as much as they are deciding who wins the Super Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to become president. Those are where they Zach, get their hands. Zach, fingers. Zach thinks the, uh, he didn't like the refs in the NBA Finals, so he thinks the Rothschilds. Do you think the Rothschilds are affecting the refs? It's not true. You know, I had dinner with, I mean, uh, me and Zach had lunch with Adam Silver. He, uh, you might have seen him on my Snapchat a few weeks ago. And so we went to this ivory tower where the NBA, the National Basketball Association, top floor. What floor was that on? 60th floor or something? It was high. Yeah, it was high. We were way up there. 
And um, so we're with Adam Silver, who's the most powerful man in sports. He got voted by Time Magazine. He's in the, the most influential 100 people in the world. Two, and, two Nobel Prize winners. Seven PhDs, I'm saying. Yeah, but that was just at the top. Right. Yeah, these Those are, are the partners. These are the heads. Yeah. So the partners of long-term capital management was seven PhDs, two Nobel Prize winners. Anyway, so we were up there with um, Adam Silver, and I was talking about the refs. And he was saying, Ty, we can't, we couldn't even have the refs. There's so many people with phones now. You think you can hide a bad play when Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, uh, every little front-facing camera in the United States is watching? No, they can't, you can't fake. Same with the Rothschilds. Do you think the Rothschilds have this like room? And then how do they dispense their orders without somebody <laughs> leaking it? You know, look, Bill Clinton. What he did in the White House with Monica Lewinsky, that was before sure. social media and that shit got out. Stuff gets out now. So it's a, it's a bitch, man. So for when you want to understand banking, you need to understand a few things in banking. And I'm going to do a little test right now. Well, let's give away. We got that Apple Watch. Give that to Kate. I'm going to give an Apple Watch to the person who answers... Um, who answers this question, and this might go fast. What is, um, the current, this is a test, who is actually intelligent and who is not, or who's been training their brain, because no one's born knowing this stuff. All right, I'm gonna look up. I gotta look up the exact number right now, unfortunately. Let's see. There we go. Here we go. All right. What is the federal discount rate? Begin. That's the number, by the way. What's the federal discount rate? Who knows? Someone said 16%. No, you're way too high, bro. 1% is getting closer. The federal discount rate. As of, this would have been as of 8-8. Eight, eight. So, right now. Close, close. Oh, right there. Was that, that it? it? Yeah. Well, right here. Drones and Sneakers is the YouTube name. Congratulations. The current federal discount rate is 1.75%. What is the federal discount rate? You need to know. It affects your life. It affects your credit cards. It affects when you go to buy a house or when you go to buy a car. You want a Lamborghini, guys? You got to know how the banking system works. Okay? You want to get a house? You're probably not going to pay cash for a house if you're smart. You might as well use some of the damn bank money. They give you almost free money in America. Plus, they give you a tax deduction on the interest. It doesn't make sense to buy shit cash, everything cash, even though, again, idiotic people think you should, if you have any debt, that you're something wrong. There's good debt and there's bad debt. Okay, 1.75. This is the rate. The federal discount rate is basically the rate that banks can borrow funds from the, from the government. So they borrow money. It's very bizarre, but banks borrow money from the government. And they don't pay that much money for that. They pay 1.75%, and it's limited, and they move that up and down to try to control the, the world. So the Rothschilds don't control that, and there's a board of bank. It, it's complicated. There's no one person that can do it. This is, I guess, what I'm saying. All right? Somebody said they got that right. Somebody said, Ty, it's a good in indicator of inflation. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, inflation and interest rates are, diff are similar. Because in the 1980s, did you know if you put money, especially in the early 80s, if you put money in your bank, you know how much interest they gave you per year? 18% on your money. If you put... $1 million in to a checking account in the 1980s. 
they'd pay you one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. I think it went higher. I think it went to like twenty two percent or something. So here's what that means. So when I came to America in what was it in uh, nineteen forty two? Nineteen ninety eight. I remember a checking account was like seven eight percent. Yeah. Which was like wow, that's pretty cool. I thought hmm. back then. But the problem is that remember this one saying. This is going to change somebody's life that writes this down. A great philosopher, and of course it slips my mind who said this. Let me look it up. But here's the saying. Same. There are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. So for those of you who think, there we go. There are no solutions, only trade-offs was Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell. Sowell, sorry. He's a... You like him. Isn't he a capitalist guy you like, Zach? Yeah, he's, he's a libertarian. He's a libertarian kind of guy. But there's no solutions. There's only trade-offs. That's even in the brain, like you were saying. Rain Man was such a genius, but it wasn't a solution to be that smart because he had to trade some of the functioning of being able to look somebody in the eye and say, hello, you want to go on a date to have a girlfriend? He yeah. couldn't do that. All right, we're gonna we gotta reset Instagram right now. Someone said, Kate, are you looking at me? Kate, you got your fans going. Twenty eight thousand people were just watching live on Instagram. We probably got about across all these, we got about fifty thousand people watching live, which is kind of cool. It's like a stadium, man. It's like a football stadium. What is huh. the what is the football stadiums down in the soccer stadiums in Argentina? How many do they hold? About fifty thousand. The biggest one, I'm not sure. I know it's a River Plate, but I'm not really sure. I can look, look it up. up. What is it? What's the biggest football? U.S. football? Or Zach? Dallas Cowboys? Uh, I would think so. I'll How big? Check. I think that holds like sixty. No, the Detroit, that damn Astrodome or whatever they used to have. Remember where the Detroit Pistons played there? They had like seventy-five thousand people, wasn't it? Or seven sixty? Hundred thousand is AT and T Stadium in Dallas. Wow, in Dallas. Sixty-two thousand is the biggest one in Argentina. Really? Okay. All right. Let's keep talking. Let's. I want to switch subjects real quick. You know what? The, the yesterday I read an interesting trivia. The biggest stadium in the world is in North Korea. Really? <laughs> it was a uh, hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, do they all go to see Kim Jong Un? <laughs> all right, let's t let's take some question and answers. Questions for Zach. Questions for Kate. Questions for Herman. Question for me. Somebody said, "How do you train your brain?" Somebody said, "Ty, get a thick girl." <laughs> They're calling you skinny. They're saying you're too skinny, I'm not Kate. Skinny. I'm in the middle. Kate's not thick or thin. She's she's feminine. She's, she's just big bone. <laughs> no. Zach, you're missing our sound effects. More yeah. on the Zach, what are you doing? Muscle. No texting. Hopefully. Ty, do you meditate? <laughs> Talk more about cryptocurrencies. I'm going to do a special edition. I'm going to bring in a buddy of mine who's an absolute expert on cryptocurrencies. So we'll be doing a Bitcoin one soon. Um, someone said, he smile is so hot. I think he meant her smile. <laughs> Ty, give us a one-liner motivation quote to start tomorrow with. <laughs> can That's they, hear, can they hear that on this? I don't know. Zach has a sound effect machine. Um, I would say how to motivate. You know, you overcome procrastination through ambition. So instead of trying to fight procrastination, you have to increase your ambition. That, and that's an interesting. You know, ambition, Herman, is part of the brain, and some of it's genetic. For example, if you have more testosterone, um, and testosterone, some of the attributes of testosterone, like anger and things like these, are passed on. If you have a really angry dad, it's more likely that you'll have one. So um, you can try to up your ambition in different ways, hopefully not just shooting up testosterone to do so. But uh, one of the things that I like to do is so think of it like this. You have, this is a long answer to, to your quote question. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Like, this thing is so sensitive. So you have procrastination here. This is what you're trying to get away from. Then the next step to get away from it is ambition. So that you just keep reverse engineering life. That's how you become a powerful person. You keep re reverse engineering life. 
So then, to be procrastination, you get ambition. So how do you get ambition? That's the next question. Okay. So to me, ambition comes out of vision. Vision. So most people have no vision. My dogs, for example, I got two German Shepherds here, Ando and Heli. Heli's from Germany. Ando's American. They're real German Shepherds, right? They cannot, they have no vision of tomorrow. They can't get excited for tomorrow. All they basically do all day is think about chasing. I have, they love good guard dogs, especially German Shepherds. You can tell by their chase instincts. So they just chase a ball that we throw all day. And I was talking to Herman about it. I mean, they could chase the ball all day, at least 18 hours a day. They got, no, they got no vision. Okay. So a lot of humans are that way. That's why tabloid media exists. That's why the best, the best selling shows on television for the last 50 years have been some of the stupidest ones. That's why the movies, some of the movies that have, what's the highest grossing movies we got? Some of them are good. This year or all time? You're saying this year. overall? Well, I'll tell you one. I didn't like Wonder Woman. I mean, the fact that everybody thinks Wonder Woman is I so good. I, I think that one became a hit because of all the people back 30, 20 years ago. They're like, oh. Why Wonder do you think Woman. people like Wonder Woman, Zach? Like my sister good loved it. I think, uh, I think there's a bit of uh, uh, an invested interest in seeing women put on the platform as yep. great superheroes. And Kate's yeah. going, yep. yep. <laughs> Kate's claiming that. a girl superhero. <laughs> no, but, but, so, okay, so, um, Zach thinks it's somewhat of the feminist agenda. No, I, think, I think there was some of that involved. I didn't dislike it. I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was great. Like, it, uh, 90 plus? Yeah, 90 movie. plus on Rotten Tomatoes. I My ass. Is people... Feeling guilty. Yeah, critics didn't. People are biased. It was like the I same. Said. It was just a regular. It was the same as any Marvel one. Yeah. It wasn't amazing, man. Anyway, if it you want to see an amazing movie, go see Wind River. I haven't seen it yet. Wind fucking River Wind is River. a movie that will blow your brains away. I mean, that, that thing's badass. Anyway, so vision. Going back to how you get ambition. If you want to make more money, you got to procrastinate less. You do that by having more ambitious. You get ambition by increasing your vision. So my definition of vision is you can see tomorrow before today happens. You can see one year out. So for example, some of you, let's just take a very finite object. Some of you see that I got like cool cars and people go, I get every day people DM me, I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> okay, well I'm like, all right, to get a Lamborghini, if you ain't born with a Lamborghini, or whatever goal you want, to be able to give a million bucks to charity, or if you want to help your mom out, whatever you want to do. If you take your current state, you're probably gonna procrastinate. Why? Because you're not that ambitious. Why? <laughs> because you can't imagine what it'll be like without actually having it. You can't imagine what it'll be like. So the people that are ambitious they can imagine, they can taste it before they have it. And therefore, they keep going until they get it. And that is the most important thing you need to motivate yourself tomorrow. What is it that you want? Can you taste it right now, even though you don't have it right now? And that triggers something on your brain, you know? That pre-thinking of something you're gonna get is the most addictive thing. It's more, it. It happens to you. I'm sure it happened to me many times where you buy something, you're like, you want something really bad. You finally buy it. Two weeks later, you're like, eh, yeah. it's there. That's because the brain anticipates reward. The anticipation yes. is more powerful than the actual event. Yes. So, and that's what's happening. What you're saying with ambition is like if you're ambitious enough and you're looking and you're like, oh, yeah, I want that Lamborghini or I want the money that brain is like really wired up to be like, yes, yes. But once you get it, you're like, oh, okay, what's the next level thing? What's the other thing that I can get for me to be excited about? But, but like that's that? where what you do in life, because that's true. Everything, look, there's a saying, everything is vanity in this world. Okay? No offense. I mean, there, you know, if you read Proverbs, what does it say? You know, all flesh is grass. 
But it basically, he said the grass, the flowers fade, everything fades. So, the, <laughs> so yes, getting a Lamborghini or getting a new house or getting a new job or starting a business and making a million dollars, eventually it's going to wear out. So my solution to that, it's funny you bring that up. I was thinking about this today. I was like, you got to always keep a new challenge in front of yourself. And if you read like Ray Dalio, one of the, he's worth $20 billion hedge fund guy. He says, you know, after he made $20 billion, he, he realizes life always got the same obstacles. You still got some person in your life that's annoying. It's gonna, you know, you st so he's like, life just becomes a perpetual challenge against yourself and you just make new stuff up, you know? Just make new stuff up. J. Cole says, love your homie. Oh, that's a song. Somebody said, design, wait, what? What's more powerful, affirmations or visualization? So affirmation is basically when you say, I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna be successful. I, I, you know, and visualization is where you, it's not necessarily verbal, I'll tell you this, Kobe Bryant, this is a cool thing he used to do, the basketball player, he would go, and Shaquille O'Neal said one time he walked in a gym and thought, thought Kobe Bryant had gone insane because he was playing a full basketball game by himself, full warm-up, with no ball. He was dribbling, but just the air. He was shooting, just the air. He was doing layups. He do that a lot. Yeah, that's visualization. Yeah, visualization. Somebody said Kobe is trash. <laughs> Zach, what do you think of that state? Was Kobe Bryant a trash basketball player? Five rings. I think I think that's the same person that earlier uh, <laughs> said something trash. About, yeah, the, the Howard Dean was an MD. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said Kate is better than Kobe. I don't think so. Uh, no, not basketball. She I'm might be. Making babies. She there. might be pretty prettier. <laughs> Someone said, I'm from Pennsylvania. Kobe is not trash. Laughing my ass off. Yeah. Yep. Ty versus Kobe. Oh, you wouldn't want to play Kobe in basketball. Did you see that LeVar Ball challenged Ice Cube uh, yesterday <laughs> to a four-point shot? Because today is the their three-on-three -three tournament at the Staples Center. All right, right. So I saw the preview. LeVar Ball talking all this shit. I will destroy you. I will beat <laughs> Guess who won? Ice Cube beat him. <laughs> Remember that LeVar Ball said that. he could beat Michael Jordan with, what was it? With one leg? Or, no, oh, no, that's what Michael, you know Michael Jordan responded to him and said, you couldn't beat me if I was playing on one leg. <laughs> that would be funny if Michael Jordan just decided to play LeVar Ball on one leg. He, on he one leg. competition so much that he might get ticked off enough. Man, that'd be a big rubber, like, tie <clears throat> What? Never mind. I was just visualizing. Zach's visualizing affirmations. How to tie Michael Jordan's leg behind? Him. You got a horse tie him over. Uh, okay, I bet you are wearing his shoes. Oh no! Check out the shoes of the day, baby. You guys know I got shoe game. I'm trying to work on Herman and Zach, but check out the shoes today. Hey, mine are cool. What are you talking about? Look at these. What am I wearing? I got the LeBron Nines. You got funny clown orange shoes. No, yeah. these are called the LeBron the Nines. Brothers these are the space version. You put some youth circus music on there. They don't appreciate, you guys under appreciate that. These are these intergalactic ones. They got space right there. Yeah, exactly. Space 2012 shoe. LeBron wore, these are special editions. I, I got the uh, Ferrari. I got the Ferrari Zach, shoes. Zach, her, her mom's from Argentina, so he's wearing some some cow shoes. No. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, got it's cow so no, her mom's wearing soccer shoes. Yeah. They're not soccer, they're just These are the big bangs, baby. <laughs> the Braun 9 big bangs. They're badass. Um, okay. It, it's a little you late. Know, Ty wears yeah, those so at night nobody you know, runs over him with a car so yeah. they can see him from far. Uh, okay. Also, whenever the power's out. He somebody said, <laughs> somebody said, chanclas. Chanclas. <laughs> <laughs> Who hears from, let, let, is, do we have anyone here from Argentina? Come on. Do we have anyone here from Argentina? If so, Me. where? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> do you pay attention to Periscope chat? Um, Periscope? Twitter. That's kind bot, of bad. Twitter bought Periscope. So all the live chat. You know, Periscope is the dumbest People there's nobody of all from the Argentina? No, there, there's there a bunch we go. of people saying... 
Someone said Ki- they're from Kiev, Argentina. The yeah. Kiev is in the Ukraine, buddy. Here we go. Carbon I'm from Mobile, Argentina. Cobra Viper is from what city? Is anybody some Veronica Aventura said no, I'm from El Salvador. Who Same here's thing. who's been to El Salvador? Zach, have you been to El Salvador? No, no, just uh, Guatemala, Mexico, and Costa Rica. Zach loves Central America because he's white. Oh my God. He's, he's very white. He's <laughs> oh white. God. He's white, tall, and has red hair, and so the Latin women love him. Yeah, yeah. Why did you ever come back? Uh, it, it was legal issues and <laughs> the authorities, basically. <laughs> Too many pregnant women. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I would not do that. His mom might be watching. A lot of good Catholic girls down there. It's a little more difficult than you might think. Argentina. What's the best job for a high school student? You know, I think the best jobs now are... For if high you, schoolers, restaurants. Yeah, if you want a 9-to-5 job, not restaurants. Good unless kids. you want to be in the restaurant business. Yeah. No. Because you don't want to... Listen, business. when you're a, a teenager, you don't want to optimize for maximum income yet. Yeah. You want to maximize for ma- um, maximum increase in brains and uh, brain function and skills. Yeah. Sales. Get a damn. If you want to get a nine to five job, so you could start your own business sales as a teenager. Tutoring. Seventy. No, fuck. Tu- well, tutoring, yes, because then you learn. Yeah. But then you mostly tutoring people on shit like isosceles triangles and stuff. Sales. Seventy percent of billionaires. There's a great book called The Self Made Billionaire Effect. Self-made billionaire effect. Buy that book. And 70% of billionaires were in what profession for quite a while? Sales. Sales. Ray A. Kroc, started McDonald, was in sales. You know, Mark Cuban was in sales. They had people in sales, man. And they might not do it their whole life. So get a, like, there's, people always ask me about Cutco, which is you you sell knives door to door. Get a job like that. And some of those guys make decent money. I don't work for Cutco or get any kickback for telling you that. That's What's just... That? Jinsu knives? Gingsu knives? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jinsu. They Jinsu. cut the can and the tomato. Knife. No, no, but Cutco... And then your shoe. You don't have a cutting? Zach's starting to fade. Why well, don't you... Just, here, a hundred let me have this. Here. Give it to Kate. Let the, Kate do it for a while. Uh, oh, Come on, I'm Zach. Uh, I'm, I, Kate, I've got I think the you sound think you're guy. not able. No, here's no, the problem. So you see how many is on one page? And yeah. there's a hundred. You're not gonna let Kate. So guys, what do you think of Zach? He won't be generous and share with Kate at all. Wait, give her the the blue sound thing. Oops. <laughs> it is sensitive, guys. Yeah. So when you're trying to scroll through, that's whenever y'all would hear me out of nowhere. Yo. Yo. Okay. If they're a little random. <laughs> that's when y'all. Um, talking about uh, the white dress. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Kate, I want you to be giving that us some like sound Adrian. effects. That actually sounds like Adrian when you do that one. Someone said, sharing is caring, Zach. <laughs> Doesn't want to find out that she's better than him. That's what Adrian <laughs> Vasquez like, says. Her time is... There you go. How do I scroll through without hitting him? Oops. In between. Kate, you yeah, have to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in between. What a Adrian dumb app. Finger. What an app they forgot to put a scrolling thing in. Wow. <laughs> that sounded like her. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about making money. That's today's subject. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good She's one. She's doing better than me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm doing too much. <laughs> Try to match it with what we're talking about. I That's know, the that, whole skill. That was so <laughs> if you. I'm you. That's the problem because you get 12 a page. There's like so there's many. Someone, you know what's funny? People are noticing that you don't blink a lot, Kate. So there's people literally saying on here like, "Ooh, she blinked twice. Call the police." It's, <laughs> it's amazing that things people pay attention to. Oh, dude, people. Do like, I not blink a lot? Maybe. That's like a sign of a sociopath, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they so. Know. They just stare. Someone said, "Stay off the weed." Unfortunately, the camera. I don't know. Fortunately, bring the, the pain. Not said, "67 exact. steps is very helpful." Well, thank you, 67 yeah. Steps. Coming up with this Spanish version. By the way, soon you'll be able to go to tylopez.com/brain. It's not quite up yet, and you'll be able to buy this brain supplement. And we also have a separate, I invested in Herman company. We also have Omegas, Omega 67. We've got a fish oil. So probably by the time you're listening to this podcast, tylopez.com slash brain. No, I don't want to show them because on the live, they'll start shaking so they can hear it. 
Yeah. Um, Those are just Mexican so these are new tropics and the brain pill that Actually, I'll do a giveaway ah, I'll do a giveaway Okay, I'll we can give us away some brain pills good idea. I'll do I'll do a give let's but, give away a mentor box me, But they gotta follow can me you grab a <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's give away some brain pills and let's get there's a mentor box over there I'm gonna give away these are different companies that I'm an investor or co-owner in so but wait, I can give these I'm, to you. I'm dictating the the, the, the brain <laughs> well, ones. Kate, they what was that? Me, they have to follow me on Instagram. It was a splat, but I'm sorry. These that are does very... not sound like. Do the splat again, Kate. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that sounds like. Hey, everybody's time someone has a shitty idea. I want you to play that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Kate, I got a Snapchat. This hold up, look this way. Kate is running. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Kate is running the sound effect for my podcast radio show. Every time someone has a shitty idea, what's the sound you're gonna make, Kate? Ugh. That, what's this, it called splat? Splat. I'm still getting used to all these. Come on, give me one more for Snapchat. Okay, um. How was that a good one? That's the one you went with? <laughs> <laughs> That's your choice. Kate, give there's a hundred on that app to there's, choose from. I know, there's one. so many. Okay, let's try this one. <laughs> uh, that one's all right. That makes me hungry. <laughs> I'm going to do that one when somebody's boring me. I'm going to just pretend <laughs> like I'm eating <laughs> chips. <laughs> oh, that sound. What is the sound effect app, Zach, so people can download it? Uh, What's that it called? One, 100 buttons. 100 buttons. 100 buttons. Sounds. Download it. App. Mess with your friend's brain. Leave them voice memos with that. <laughs> Uh, it's not a paid advertisement. Okay. Let's give away a mentor box. Mentor box, I'm going to give you a free one month. Careful with Kate's face. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was the... <laughs> mentor box is a company that I co-founded, my business partner, Alex. One person is Did going to get Did y'all mean to make the box have it upside down? Yes, lettering? because then in the mirror. So this is the right way. So mentor box, it gives you two books, one or two books. I'm not sure what we're doing now. I think we might have switched to one with study guides to speed read through the books. That's the medium. You're going to get the right? next. <laughs> <That's, laughs> the M is for a mentor box. I'm giving up the job. Okay. Here's how you win one. What is the author of the book that I've been talking about? What is his full name? Ready, set, go. This book right here. That's a good one. I said it early on. Who's listening? There we go. Yep, Kyle Scott. Quick. On YouTube is the winner, Ken That's Fisher. The one you got really good. With Beat the Crowd. Uh, we will be mailing you one. Make sure, Alec, can you tell that to Alex Mayer? Mentor Box. If one you want to get your own version of Mentor Box, we also have a digital version. Check out mentorbox.com. It is a badass company. I started with Alex Mayer uh, in or October, and it's now the largest book shipping hey. company in the world. We got interviews with you know the top 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 authors in the world we're making it easier to read so you don't have to read long books we're shortening them for you and summarizing you want to be smart you want to be smart like zach with his right. sound effect skills okay wait wait that one we're gonna do a giveaway yeah but they have to follow me thank you very much all right herman <laughs> wants followers so we're gonna be giving away some brain hey you want neuro 67 yo Supplements. So what do you do? Like the first person that follows or something? No, no. Here's what we do. The hundredth person. What's your Instagram again? Dr. Fresco. All right. All spelled out. The word doctor. Yes. So right now, in a minute, we're going to pick a winner who gets a free Neuro 67 bottle. We could do two bottles. Two bottles. And Here, uh, hand it to me. Yeah. These, these Here, two. just stay there. Show them. You get two Neuro 67 Cognitive Enhancers and an Omega 67 Oil, Omega 3 Fatty Acids. Also, good for your brain. Okay. So brain. we're going to send this whole kit, okay, to one person who follows Dr. Fresco. D-O-C-T-O-R-F-R-E-S-C-O. Dr. Fresco. All right, so follow him and then like and comment on one of his Instagram and posts. Don't be unfollowing me afterwards. <laughs> yeah, go, everyone, everybody to cheaters. follow and then instantly crazy. unfollow. Are you getting follows? Good, it's crazy. Let me see. <laughs> Dr. Fresco. Wow. Here, show him. 
Ooh. All right. He is getting followers. It's pouring in the alerts. One of you will be the lucky winner. Does it send to Australia? We can ship to most countries. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll personally ship. So them. we just had Omar Romero, OG King, Sasha Janney, Brand Knee, Omar X, Alex Varga, Sasha. Oh, I already said that one. OG Chase. You need to follow, like, and comment. 19 squishy 97 computer cleaning duster started following you. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these is YouTube names. Guys, don't put underscores in your damn usernames. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Little trick. This guy's one is OG underscore kings underscore monies underscore. <laughs> that is the worst. You're not going to grow. Think, I think something was stuck on his uh, keypad <laughs> when he was creating. 19 squishy 97 Nico underscore W58. Guys, see if you can change your username. Just have one word. <laughs> it could be a compilation of words. Don't have underscores. I'm trying to help you out. All right, we're gonna do this. A couple more minutes. Follow Dr. Fresco, and then instantly unfollow. No, I'm just don't unfollow. Don't He'll be, be butthurt. Me. He'll be butthurt. I'm a Leo. Ty, is your millionaire mentor program still open? No, you missed it. Some of you missed it. Ty, talk about PewDiePie. Well, PewDiePie is a huge YouTuber from Sweden. Makes a lot of money. That's about the extent. I don't know too much more about him. But I know he's killed this YouTube game. Someone said, Kate, show us your feet. I know. Those I weird those guys. Seen them. I actually There's got a weird. pedicure, so they're looking good. <laughs> Kate makes Ty smile so big, I love it. <laughs> is that true? Debatable. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's the opposite. Um, too much sauce. Okay, let's keep talking. We talked about banking. We talked about Bitcoin. We talked about the brain. We talked about wine. Should you drink it? Should you not? We talked about, what else did we talk about? Um, we talked about trauma, what it does to your brain. We talked about the Rothschilds. We talk about long-term capital management. You guys have been learning a lot of shit. I'm teaching you everything that they should have taught us in school. Literally, there's not one class that I had, maybe you went to a different kind of school, that really taught me about this stuff. Ty, are stocks worth investing in? If you know what you're doing, they can be your best investment. If you don't, you'll go broke. Many people have lost money, a lot of money in the stock market, and many people in fact, the record for somebody who traded stocks, now he was a hedge fund manager, so he didn't just trade his own stocks, he traded stocks for other people. This, I'm gonna do a little competition here. We're gonna give away 100 bucks to someone who names this guy, okay? Names this guy. This was a hedge fund guy. And while we're waiting on the Hermann Prize, in, this is about 10 years ago, he made a massive amount of money because the way hedge funds work is basically he got 20% of the profit he makes other people as the hedge fund manager. And so his pay in one year, okay, he was paid this amount of money. Let me see, I wanna see what year it was in. This is just gonna blow your mind because you know how people talk about CEOs and all this and blah, 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 blah. Um, let me just put in here. Well, CEOs don't make shit compared to traders. Not trade tours, traders. Guys <laughs> who trade in the stock market, particularly hedge funds. They run these funds, they manage money for other people, usually rich people. Regular people can't put their money in most hedge funds because they'll have a minimum, you have to be an accredited investor, $1 million. Somebody said Bernie Madoff. No, not Bernie Madoff because, um, yeah. There you go for that person. Thank you, Zach. Zach on the sound. I'm just pulling up the year. Damn it, why can't I find it? Well, Ray Dalio's on there, but that's not the answer that's gonna that you're gonna win with. Crazy thing is, well, I won't say this actually. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's 
Zach, entertain for a second. I need you. Zach and Armand. In your yes. face, suck up! <laughs> Let's actually have Kate. Kate, you, a, you answer face, some up. questions. You entertain right. while I did it. All right, I'm taking questions, guys. Hmm. <laughs> That's a good sound. I like that you gave her the <laughs> ice cream truck <laughs> for all the perverts. Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I'm not getting any questions. You're not getting any questions? Brain questions? No. Wait, the Instagram, you just have to go like this. There you go. There you go. My now. favorite makeup brand, I got that one. Well, I am, I actually don't wear very expensive makeup. I just go to Sephora <laughs> and get, I'll just buy anything cheap, honestly. I don't really. Not Kate's like, not super high maintenance. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'm not all. I wouldn't spend like sixty dollars on Mac and stuff. Like I just can't. I can't do that. <laughs> wow. <Bouncing about web. laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? Mm. I hope someone else has. Am a... I married? No, I am not married. Why would? <laughs> What's wrong with people? <laughs> Why would I be married? I'm 21. So. Married to Ty. I'm a little young to oh. be married, in my oh. opinion. 21. You're very fertile at that age. Zach, <laughs> what? what? Her mom keeps bringing up fertile. <laughs> not kids anytime soon. I want to be. Her mom is creeping stable. me out. <laughs> the last book I read. Was that for me, Zach? Focus. America's I most wanted. Spot. Daniel Goleman. She's reading a book. One of my. I'm trying books. to focus more because apparently I'm. I don't know, scatterbrained or whatever. <laughs> Kate is a little scatterbrained. Yes. Just a little bit. But I'm oh. working on it. Someone said, why is the podcast on so late? My guess is you're in another time zone. <laughs> <laughs> so for some people, it's early. <laughs> Am I Russian? No. I'm Norwegian. And something else. What is your best asset, Kate? What would you my say? My best asset? Hmm. Face. Kate has a good no, face. No, not my face. No? Your heart. Wait, they're talking about physical. Nobody ever likes their Your business. Mind. They're talking about their oh, physical. Oh, physical features? Yeah. They don't care Your about Your eyes? <laughs> My eyes, she I has... guess. They're just blue, but... Now, oh, Kate my. has a good face. She has a very symmetrical... What are some of your interests? My interests? <laughs> Zach, are you reading these or making these up on your own? No, I I, I thought of that question. Oh my How tall am I? Five, six, and three quarters. Zach goes, I thought of that. It, like it was some profound question. It was, what are your interests? <laughs> hey, I read it. it. For all you guys trying to date girls off Tinder and all this stuff or wherever you meet them. I love football. Oh, sorry. I was answering a question. <laughs> I love I love lamp. Oh. Um, uh, a date where the guy asks the most questions. They eavesdropped on a whole bunch of dates. When the guy asks a ton of questions, inevitably it's a bad date and he doesn't get a second date. So be very careful about going on a date and asking him lots of questions. Oh, yeah. That's such it a should just be move. conversational. Well, you know what happened with that one? They, they probably heard that advice of like, let them talk. You know, you listen, and they're probably like asking a million questions. They want them to talk, but then they got annoyed. Yeah. yeah. They say it's better, and this, this study said it's better to just have a free-flowing conversation. Somebody said girls love talking. Kate is pretty laid back compared to Ty. Is that true? I'm know. pretty chill. Kate's not you totally chill. Are, I think, yeah, I think you're both chill. You're just more outgoing, more talkative. I'm just... No, Kate does talk. She's shy on camera. We went to the Playboy Mansion yesterday. She doesn't talk to strangers. It takes me a second. To Especially know. when they're naked. <laughs> there are so many naked girls. Zach was girl. macking on some naked Playboy chicks. Well, they were fans. They, they, they were fans. Yeah. <laughs> they actually weren't even for Playboy. They just took off their clothes when they saw <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were over there having some drinks and told their friend, hold, hold this. And they disrobed and came over. All right, let's pick the winner. Okay, by the way, let me, let me, we got two winners. Wait, for what? What hedge fund manager made $1.3 billion, that was his pay, in 2014? He was paid 1.3, imagine your salary is $1,000 million. He was, is that, his was $1,300 million. Ray Dalio, no, close. 
this guy, by the way. Okay. So if you see that name, that's it. There we go. Richard Colbreath. Colbreath. It's Ken Griffin. So this all started, somebody asked me the question, can you make money trading stocks? And the answer is, if you trade them for your own account, like your own 401k, you can grow your money at a reasonable pace, but you're not gonna get rich usually off doing that unless you take tremendous risk. And then sometimes you take tremendous risk, you lose it all. So the people that make the most money, if you're interested in the stock market, my advice to you is reprogram your brain to become an expert on everything related to the markets. And that's, don't just pick one thing. Don't just become an expert at Forex. Don't just become an expert at commodities. Don't just get become an expert at day trading. You want to have a broad understanding. You can specialize later, but you need to understand comedy, uh, commodities. You need to understand, you know, the Hang Sang market. You need to understand the Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. You need to understand um, Germany. You, India has a big stock exchange now. Okay. 1.3 billion was his pay. Let me just put that in perspective. If he paid himself out monthly, which he didn't, but let's just say he had a, a paycheck. You know how you get your paycheck every two weeks? His paycheck, okay, well is 50 divided by 13, or 1300 divided by 52 weeks. Let's just call it 50 weeks. So what is that? You asking me? Yeah. What was that again? 50 weeks. 50 divided by 1300? 1, $1,300 million dollars divided by 50 weeks. 1300 divided by 50, Herman. It's like four, four, 400, 400,000? 26. Okay. Right. So he roughly paid himself, roughly, how much per, per week? Oh, we got to divide it in half because it's every other week. So, sorry, 25. Divided by 25? 1,300 divided by 25 is? Well, you can do the math. Just, 4 times 13. So it's uh, 26, 52. So he got paid $52 million a paycheck. So people talk about, oh, LeBron makes a lot. Oh, Ronaldo makes a lot. Oh, Messi makes a lot. Oh, the, no, nobody makes money like these hedge fund guys. Imagine every two weeks your paycheck <laughs> was 50. To, now, they would take taxes out, but did you know that hedge fund guys have a special tax break in the U.S. government? It's called carry. It's a tax. They, their income is not called a paycheck. It's called carry, okay? C-A-R-R-Y. So they only pay, like, I don't know, capital gains rate, so 15%. So that means he'd get – his check was $50 million every two weeks – Minus 15%. So what's 15% of 50? You know, minus 7 million bucks or so. So let's just say roughly he got paid 40 million after tax every two damn weeks. For all of you trying to work harder, are you also working smarter? You got to ask yourself that. Some people are like, Ty, I'm just going to work hard and everything's going to work out. <laughs> That's Zach's play. Um, let me Snapchat this. We're just talking about Ken Griffin, who was a hedge fund manager. He made 1.3 billion was his pay in one year. People think CEOs, they think Ronaldo makes money, they think LeBron James make money. This guy made $50 million per paycheck. Imagine every two weeks for a year you got paid 50 million. So those of you who ask me, can you make money in the stock market? Can you make money in Bitcoin? If you're an expert, you can make money managing other people's money. That's what he did. So. Be careful of oversimplified answers. You're not going to make $50 million <clears throat> probably investing 100 bucks in Bitcoin. It's not realistic. But if you're starting out without much money, you can go learn how to manage other people's money. It's a huge profession, wealth management. And uh, you know, if you get to the upper levels, you run your own hedge fund. There was a guy at my house on Snapchat the other day. He ran a $350 million, which is much smaller, but still he managed, you know, quarter of a billion or a third of a billion dollars so that's my answer long answer when you want to the reason you must reprogram your brain by the way I want you guys to catch the vision is that there's amazing upside potential for each of you someone said can they get a yeehaw Zach uh, I'll try 
and my Snapchat froze. So let's see if this bad boy comes around. Let me close my other apps. What? Uh, I hit it. I'm scrolling through. Zach is struggling with the sound app. Okay, we're about to wrap up here, but I want to do one final thing. We got to do Hermont. We'll do that last Hermont. We got to go. <laughs> we have a laptop to give away too. What's that? Yodeling? That's yeah. cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Someone, Bitcoin is the future. Someone said, look at her. Someone said, is there a Kamahama Mema song? What is that? <laughs> Kate is a baddie. I'm hungry. Dude, how you get so rich? Someone just wrote Ben Bernanke. That's all they wrote. <laughs> I like people that just write one word things act like that. As if I'm supposed to. Ben Bernanke. <laughs> Um, okay. Tell you inspired me to sell Forex signals. What would you do with a paid off home given to you by a family member investment wise? Probably your best thing you could do if you inherit a home, in my opinion. Now, I don't know your whole situation, so you might have debt other places, but in general, best thing you can do with an asset is ask it to make you money every month. So. Probably if I had a paid off home, I would look at how much it's appreciated and what my tax bracket would be. So potentially, just sell the home because it depends. Sometimes if the person dies, there's different things that happen tax-wise. Sometimes you can get what's called a step up in basis, which means if somebody gives you a million or $500,000 home and their basis was, you know, that it steps up, meaning when you sell it, you don't have to pay much taxes. Sometimes... Yeah, someone gives you a $500,000 home and you sell it, you got to pay taxes on the whole $500,000. And if you haven't had the money long enough in your bank account, I mean, if you hadn't had the asset long enough in your name, you might not get capital gains. So it's complicated. But the safer thing to do is rent it out. You know, renting out is a great thing to do because then if you got an asset, it's making you money. The most important thing maybe that I should impart to you on this whole talk about rewiring your brain on today's podcast is you must have the ability to generate cash flow because every single day you incur expenses. Unless you're making, growing your own food, unless you are making your own clothing here. Kate, what are you wearing, Kate? What do we got? A backless shirt. She so got a backless shirt and jean shorts. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna be buying stuff, and so if you don't have recurring income to <clears throat> offset that, you're in trouble. So with real estate, there's people who like to flip homes. The only problem with flipping a home is, once you flip it, the income stops. You earned it all, and inevitably, what do we do when we earn money? We usually spend it. So if you gave me a choice between a career where I just flipped properties for 20 years or flip businesses, or flip stocks, day trading. That's a lot of work versus building long-term assets. Now look, if you got a house, you might only be able to rent it out for two grand a month. So it's not that much, right? It's two grand a month. Okay, that's kind of a bitch because if it's two grand a month, you could sell it for 500 grand. But what if you use that house as collateral to buy another house? Since you own it paid off, you might be able to go to the bank, you pledge the, the, the home you own as collateral, they let you buy another one. So now you buy another home that's making you two grand a month. Now possibly, if there's enough equity in the first home, you can pledge it for two homes. So you could turn one gift, this person who asked me, I think it was on Facebook, you could conceivably turn that into three homes and if they each average two, average two grand, you now have a $6,000 a month revenue stream. Now, the second two homes you got, if you pledged that home, you'd get, you're gonna have some mortgage payments. So let's say your mortgage payments are three grand. So your net cash flow is three grand. But now you also control three properties, which if you buy in the right place, and I recommend to do this, that you don't buy condos or anything weird like that. You buy either single family homes, duplexes, fourplexes, or even apartment buildings. If you do that, now you got three properties that while you sleep 
are slowly going up in value, 3%. Real estate on average goes up 3 to 6% when you take out the leverage aspect. So 3 to 6 percent now it's going up. 3% means every 25 years, it doubles in value without you doing, just sleeping. 6% means every 12 years it doubles value. Plus, you're making three grand a month. What would you do right now if you knew you could go to sleep and no matter what, you'd make three or $4,000 a month from homes? That's, so that's the power of one gift. Let me tell you what most people do when they inherit a damn house. What do most people do, Armand? Because, yeah, but like specifically, what's a stupid thing somebody, you could imagine go somebody. Buy a car. Yeah. A cool car or, yeah. Cocaine and whores. <laughs> is that what you would do? Is it tax? No, no, I'm just speaking about the white trash and the people we've been discussing. Hey, so I was, luxury goods. I was in Europe this year and a guy inherited, my fr a girl was telling me uh, that a, her friend inherited $8 million and he spent it all in, in uh, one year. He has none left. He took his friend's partying. He like got ripped off for like a million. You know, somebody said invest in my business. He has like, he, she's literally, she says she has like a hundred grand left. You know, the, isn't there a statistic where the people that win the lottery and whatnot, yeah. most of them just. The, the average NFL player that plays pro, the average athlete, it's worse. It used to be worse. Now it's better. But the average pro football player, they used to stand, NFL used to, NFL standed not for long. Meaning you ain't gonna be rich for long. Average pro soccer player, pro football player, like you know, playing, they ain't making that much money. Ronaldo makes money, but most of these guys are making. What do you think in the U.S. the MLS? I think the top player makes about four million. But that means there's a lot of guys making like 150 grand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, sports is danger. Lottery. The average person who wins the lottery because they didn't reprogram their brain first has. I think five years till they lose all of it. There they go. That's what the average person does with it. Yeah, so, it's true. Someone said Zach is trying too hard. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, so I think it's very important that you take away from this. Reprogram your brain. Think differently. Just because everybody's excited about Bitcoin doesn't mean you should or shouldn't. Don't get caught up. Yesterday, this podcast, we talked about the Wharton book on decision making, which said <clears throat> the average person, the more difficult the decision, the more they inject emotion into it. Isn't that weird, Armand? Nope. More people put emotion into hard decisions when it should be the opposite. When it's a decision that doesn't matter, go with your heart. If somebody's like, what movie do you want to see? Annabelle or Wonder Woman, my heart would be like, Annabelle. Okay, so just go fucking see Annabelle. Just go with your emotions there. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. But a lot of people, when it comes to big decisions, they start injecting more and more emotion. You can't well, be that way. Here's what most people don't know, and it is that 95% of the decisions you make every day are emotion-based. Yes. But you know how people say, oh, I'm so rational on this. I'm like, no, you're not. 95% of everything you decided was an emotion based and pattern seeking and past experiences is also what causes that um, decision making process which is insane because then that's what happened most people end up deciding things just because of how they feel or whatever they you know it's when people decide to buy a ferrari or whatever some somebody might say I can't justify it by any means in on my imagination, no matter how much money I have, I will not buy a Ferrari. But then the other person right next to them might be like, oh, I can totally justify it. Both of them are emotionally uh, content-based decisions, yeah. which is crazy. But these guys that make more money, these men and women making more money, have less, have the ability to be more rational with their damn decisions. Yes. You know? Now. Now that we're talking about this, you point, point the camera here. I want to recommend this book for people. This book is a great book about, um, it talks a lot about mistakes we make with our brain and how to influence and cognitive biases. There's other books like it. But what I'm trying to say is the decisions you make are affected by a lot of the, and Ty has talked about cognitive bias many, many times. Um, 
the more you understand how they work, the more you know about them, the more likely or the less likely you're going to commit the mistake of falling upon those uh, uh, cognitive biases. Influence is a great book. I'm not, I, I'm not endorsing anything. I don't make money from this book. I just like this author. He actually came out with another book, um, Influenced, I think it's, or be, yeah. Or he just added a letter? Persuasion. Pers oh, yeah, persuasion, yeah. yeah. Persuasion. Persuasion, yeah. So he has influence, persuasion, and persuasion. Um, those are the kind, Ty's talking a lot about changing mindsets and to make more money. If you understand the farts, I call them brain farts. The brain farts that you make, all the, when you make decisions, you're... <laughs> I'm, done, I'm done trying to scroll through yeah, this. Every Zach time I try to scroll to get one, Zach was, was trying to do a fart sound right, and we'll, he did like we'll the, for your the Lord sound. of the Flies no, no, horn. No, I, was that the Lord of the Flies <laughs> horn? It was some Viking <laughs> mess, but you can't scroll through without hitting it. Just put the fart. There you go. Was that a fart? <laughs> Sorry to mess Yeah, brain that. farts right there. So that's what you want. You want to... Uh, understand the mistakes your brain makes and you can only understand them if you study those things if you say okay oh I can make this mistakes like this or like that um, and you can learn that book talks about the cognitive biases yes. there's things that make you make mistakes hundreds, marketing hundreds of cognitive biases there's about 20 that are the most important and most common but there's over a hundred cognitive biases that have been you know Discovered you could say or, or yeah, there's cognitive biases Kantian fairness reciprocity urgency uh, uh, Liking disliking biases Pavlovian responses association biases availability biases There's senescence biases chemical biases reward biases pain biases Ty Lopez biases all kinds of biases. Ty Lopez no, there's no one named after me yet <laughs> Ty will you review my website? What's your website? Let's do that Someone said, who's that woman and why is she so bored? <laughs> I told you, Kate, people judge on the outside. Kate's just been introduced to this world. <laughs> we have 4,000 virgins watching right now, Kate, that have never seen a pretty woman. And so they're going to psychoanalyze every single part of you. Trust me. Trust me. Um, What's she looking at? What's she looking at now? Yeah. <laughs> Some people were counting... How often you blinked. Uh, yeah, that's, to that's me, that's weird. crazy. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that what? People are just... Dude, one thing I've learned from... I got into social media about two years ago. Really, the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. And the number one thing I have learned is... Oh, man. This world. That, here, that, let me just have one last straight talk with you. Here, here's a big problem. The bigger the population gets, even if the percentage of morons, idiots, and psychopaths doesn't increase, just the same percentage. Let's just say 1% of people are horrible people. It, it, it's a higher number than that, but trust me. Uh, you can even Google it. 1% of the world are psychopaths, clinical psychopaths. So let's just keep it at that, even though there's other bad things, Machiavellianism, you know, low R factor, I mean low K factor, high R factor, all this stuff. Let's just say psychopaths. So one out of a hundred people you meet is literally one of the worst people. I mean, they will fuck. If they could stab you in the back, if they could steal your money, the only thing keeping them from doing it is they don't know your bank login and they might, 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 might be worried about the police. Probably not. Psychopaths usually underestimate risks and overestimate rewards. So 1%. Now, in the year 1900, there was about 1 billion people on the planet. <clears throat> So what's 1% of a billion? And the answer is 10 million. Okay? Now there's six so in the year 1900, 17. my grandma was born in 1917. So around when my grandma was born, she's still alive, she's 99, there was only 10 million psychopaths. That's a lot, but most of them didn't have technology, they didn't have power. A few of them rose to power. Joseph Stalin was one. Mao Zedong was, Mao Zedong was born in the, in the 1800s. So was Adolf Hitler. So was Joseph Stalin, the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia, another source of genocide. So now you, we'll just take four dictators, okay? Um, oh, Mussolini was another one in Italy. So you, uh, uh, so you got Pol Pot in Cambodia. What was the guy in, in Yugoslavia had another one? So these guys were born 
at this time we're talking about, late 1800s, so on. So, <clears throat> 10 million psychopaths. No. Now, 70. 7 billion, we're almost at 8 billion humans. So let's say we've 7 x or 8 x Now there's 80 million psychopaths. And you know the difference? Now they can reach you. They can reach your damn Instagram. They can reach your YouTube. They can reach your Facebook. They can potentially take a car and start running people over like they did in Charlottesville. They can get on an airplane with razor blades. That's all those guys had. And they can drive a plane like 9-11 into a tower that disrupts world economies for at least five to ten years, the repercussions. I mean, it wasn't not until 2000. It was a big deal if you look at what 9-11 did. You can have people blow themselves. So this is what I've learned from social media. And this is there's at least 80 million Horrible people on this planet. Huh. Horrible. Yeah, and that's just the horrible. Think of all the people that just take their time to click dislike on a video or, you know, make. Yeah, dumb the, what's the one about. Wait them? a minute, you're not comparing <clears throat> what? People clicking dislike with horrible people. No, well, what I'm no, but for no reason. People, people <laughs> I've <laughs> never in my life disliked the video. I yeah, haven't watched many. It's like, I, if I don't like it, I don't like it. I don't, you I just don't change wait. it. When yeah. I don't like, I dislike my movie. Yeah. No, but what was the one about uh, or Beethoven? Somebody was there. If you look on like one of yeah, Beethoven's, yeah. Be Fifth Beethoven's Symphony. Fifth Symphony, there's a dislikes. There's a really? thousand. Like a Somebody thought, that's not very good music. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the greatest musicians yeah, of that's all what time. I mean. and, 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 and I 100% agree that not everybody should like Beethoven's Fifth uh, Symphony. But to take the time to go actually have an account, be logged in, to actually say, I dislike this. It, and to and the worst, look it up. Yeah, to look and, it up. And, and, and the worst is make comments. You know, make negative comments about it. Oh, this music sucks. I'm like, who cares? It's like, what's the point? That's why all these people. Are I told not you, people money. are bitches of their own brain. Yeah. Half the people watching this right now and listening to it, not to insult you, but. This will be insulting. You are bitches of your own brain. If you grew up with mommy and daddy who were mean, you'll be fucking mean because you're a bitch of your brain. That's my whole point. Yeah. If you were born white trash, if you are born in the ghetto, most people have cyclical generational ignorance, generational po uh, uh, poverty. People don't grow out. You got to grow up, man. How many times do you make a bad comment on a video? Never, Never mind. Is still on this <laughs> video. Yeah. It's because it, it just... Boggles my mind that people take their time to do stuff like that. Even if I, many times I have you ever written bad comments on videos? No comment. No comment. <laughs> you have Zach. Are no, you one of no, those no. that waste your time? No. Disliking and I used to get into debates. No, no go on different. Twitter. Go on Twitter. Debating this is what you want to do. You go on Twitter and you look at the hashtags. I've made comments on stuff that I somebody might have asked a question or somebody might say something. I'm like, no, I don't think this is correct. No, I know it's three people no, dead after shooter know. open fires at Great Lakes drag away. There you go. Somebody open fire. We got. Oh, dude, look at what's happening. Let's with see. Venezuela, so, you know. Yeah, look at Venezuela. This country's got still got dictators. You got people starving to death. Nobody can fix it. They can't fix it in their own country. No other Latin American country can help them. I mean. Yes. So let me end by saying this on a good note. Um, every person on this call, your main obstacle in life is between your own damn ears. Period. It's between your own ears. So at the end of the day, Donald Trump will then have shit to do with your life. And either does Kim Jong-un. Unless there's literally a nuclear ex uh, uh, you know. Holocaust that will affect us all but for the most part you will create your own Holocaust or your own paradise in between your own, your ears it will not be the Rothschilds or the price of Bitcoin or the price of the federal <coughs> discount rate that changes your income it is your ability to think so Herman just gave some simple heuristics heuristics are a scientific way of saying decision-making for those of you 
who are always skeptical, cynical. That's called Machiavellianism. It means your brain's fucked. Period. That's what a smart person will tell you. Your mommy didn't, didn't tell you that, but I ain't your mommy. It's a classic disorder. Yes. Hyper cynical people are considered Machiavellian. There's a test you could do. It's called the dark triad test. You can do the hexaco test, the big five test. There's many tests. It's a, there's a scale of psychopathy and things like that. Um, so if that's you, you better fix it because there's tremendous penalties for it at everybody, at every level, financially, emotionally, <coughs> physically. Machiavellian people suck. They always have, they always will. And there's probably about 20% of the world is Machiavellian. You know, 1% of the world's psychotic, about 20% or more is Machiavellian. So if that's you, when you get that ultimate cynical thing and you see conspiracies everywhere and you think that this and you go, oh man, it's the Rothschilds running the government, it's the Federal Reserve, everybody's out to get me, 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 me. If you think everything in this world is somehow affecting you, you might also have what's called narcissism. You know? So my advice to most people is look, at the end of the day, keep a very small, tight social circle of trusted people. Read a hell of a lot, but only read the greatest and the smartest because they will accelerate you to where you wanna go the quickest. And that's a key thing. If you wanna go on the slow route, then ignore what I'm saying. Um, make sure that you have a massively efficient daily routine because there's a lot to do if you wanna do big things, a lot to do, and um, sorry, I'm resetting this. There's a lot to do. So for those of you who have a scattered daily routine, who can't hold consistently to one thing, for those of you that have the rewiring of your brain and everything you should be doing, actually I was talking to Kate about this. If you cannot focus for long periods of time, you in big trouble, okay? ADD, the level of ADD of the modern world is so high that I got good news for you. It can be very easy for some of you to make a million dollars. Very easy because your competitor cannot sit down and read for one hour a day. They're too stupid. They're too, um, they're too ADD. And I'm not even talking about the clinical type of ADD. If that's you, there is no solution for you. Hey, in the future, we should put swap these two in the future. Okay. Remember to put that one off on the side because that one's the least okay. important. We have, it in, <clears throat> we have it in like the most important spot where I see it. It really should be like this. Yeah. Twitter is the least important one to focus on. It's got the most idiots and the least amount of people. Um, so somebody said, Scott Taylor said, if you can't stop texting for a long, focus for long periods of time, girl stops texting. Irony. <laughs> Did you stop texting when I said that, Kate? <laughs> I wasn't. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, these are the You're these coming. are the re these are if you are in the game of life and after 30 minutes you haven't figured out who the sucker is, you're the sucker, but you're not the sucker in the way that you think you're the sucker. You're not the sucker. It, no one's out to get you. You you'll be your own worst enemy. You don't have to worry about the you think the Illuminati's coming to get you? They ain't coming to get you. You think that it's, for the most part, it'll be your close supposed friends and family that will screw you over. A few <clears> of them. <throat> most of them won't. A few of them will do it and they'll cause damage. And then your own brain will cause you the most damage. You will literally, how many people here, real honestly, think that if for one year they read books on how to make money or how to be happier or um, how to start a business would be worse off in one year. Who here thinks they'd be worse off? Anybody that dumb? That you think you'd actually be worse off? Well, the question is, why didn't you do that one year ago? Did you read a book a week? The average CEO reads a book a week, 50 books a year. Did you read 50 nonfiction books? And the answer is inevitably, of course not. Nobody does, but a few people do. And you want to aspire to be part of the few, not the part of the many. The many 
our living animal savage level brains. They're relying on instinct. Um, and so if you have the ability to rise above instinct, then you'll be better than my German Shepherds. My German Shepherds can't make a penny. They don't even know what money is. And that's how a lot of people are. If you don't believe me, talk to your friends about some of the things that we talked about today. Ask your friends what the federal discount rate is. Everybody hears about it in the news almost every day. Fed's cutting the rates. Ask them if they ever <clears throat> could not procrastinate long enough to Google what the federal discount rate is. And you're going to find that not one out of a thousand will. Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett says when they, were t when they were young and studied money and investing, when they got out in the real world, they were like, They're, this is going to be such a hard game. It's going to be so many smart businessmen starting businesses and we're going to have to compete with them. And they said, they got out in the world and they're like, nobody knows what they're doing. In fact, they, they say now, if it wasn't for the stupidity in the world, they wouldn't be so wealthy. So becoming wealthy is primarily a game of not being stupid. See, people are trying to be super smart. You're either born super smart or you're not. You're not going to increase your IQ no matter what you do, no matter how much brain pills you take, to 170 IQ, period. This is not going to happen. But... You can reduce stupidity to a low level. And stupidity is things like highly emotional decisions based off your childhood. That's what it really comes down to. So most of you have highly emotional decisions. Completely, if a smart psychoanalyst, cognitive scientist came in, you're so predictable. Generational wealth. I bet you that almost everybody in your family makes about the same income. Why is that? Different people, different personalities, different aptitudes. Why is it? Because people can't rise above the emotion of copying other people. Animal savage level. The average person um, probably reads about as much books as their parents read. How many books do your parents read? That's probably how many you read. Uh, what religion are you? Let me guess. It's your parents' religion. Ooh, so original of you. You're such a great free thinker. Um, what political party are you? Oh, let me guess. It's your parents. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know how I got that. Uh, almost, oh, your value system? Oh, let me guess. It's almost like if you're born Muslim, you got Muslim values. If you're born Buddhist, you got Buddhist. Oh, that is so genius of you. You have been able to rise above your animal savage instincts. You are, I mean, this world, let me actually correct everything I said and just say how astonished I am that most Latin Americans are Catholic. Oh, how did you pull that off? Oh, a whole country's Catholic and you are too? Oh boy, you know how to go against the crowd, don't you? I mean, it kills me. It literally kills me. That's this world we live in. So the good news is, but that's good. Yeah. if you're a free thinker, let's you. You got no competition. You don't. That's what Warren Buffett found. I mean, the amount of times my life has been hampered by, by competition is zero. I can't remember a time when I'm like, you know what's messing up my business? Someone else launched a business. Never. <laughs> That's my answer. I see people being like, Ty, I got a business idea, but I can't tell it to you because you <laughs> might steal it. I won't steal your idea. I've never stole someone else. I don't need your ideas. People are so narcissistic. They think I, that people need their ideas. Shit, I, could, I got 50, a bank of 50 badass ideas that I don't have time to do. So, you gotta go to the bathroom? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Keep the mic on while you go to the bathroom, Kate. Some okay, people, I'll bring it with me. No, do not. Um, so, at the end of the day, I hope each of you becomes a free thinker. You don't need to rebel against your parents just to rebel against them. So obviously sometimes if your parents are a certain religion or something, you can follow in the same footsteps. But your life should not be a rote carbon copy of your parents and your grandparents and even your country or your city. You know, where's the visionaries on this? Where are the visionaries? That's... That's what I'd like to find. 
where's the visionaries in this damn world? You know, that's the ones who are gonna change the world. And I'll, I'll tell you this thing: most of the world is changed by like ten thousand people. Basically, everything you use and enjoy in this whole damn world, maybe ten thousand low, a hundred thousand people do everything good in the world. Who do you think invented Facebook? The masses? Trillion? Who do you think made wireless that you're watching this on or the internet? A million people? Shit, he's a few people. Who do you think comes up with all? If you hurt yourself or get sick, you have cancer, how many people do you think contribute to medical, the, the medical knowledge base, the vast base of knowledge we have to help people? You think it's some big group of people? You think it's your next door neighbor? No, it's a few people who are visionaries like Steve Jobs was, like Elon Musk is. Elon Musk is, he, Elon Musk alone is now built a car company that's more valuable than all of Ford. Ford is a hundred year old business. And Elon Musk, one visionary person who thinks outside of the box, built something that a whole set of corporations with 100,000 employees, one is greater than 100,000 in that case. And it happens over and over. So you're not gonna necessarily do it completely alone. That's why I said you will need a social, social circle. You'll probably need some business partners, but you don't need that many, okay? So someone said China's becoming the smartest country. Uh, maybe. America still has the most innovation right now. America still has a free thinking. China has very technical skills, so there's a lot of better mathematicians and engineers, but uh, not caught up to us yet in free thinking. I mean, how could you come, how could you, your country has no free thinking. You can't go on Instagram. I, it still blows my mind that China is trying to block stuff. That's not gonna last forever. <laughs> Once these next generation of hacker well, kids- can, They have their own. So they know. create their own. Like yes. Baidu, I think is their- Yeah, favorite. Baidu. They got a few. <clears throat> anyway, all right. We're gonna, someone said China smells funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's give out the neuro and the laptop. All right, Herman, pick somebody. Wait, how do I pick? I've never done your- just randomly? Yeah, give it to, tell Kate, Kate will tell Kate, you one, two, here. three. Who's gonna win Wait, the bottles we... and the, the Omega so 67? In the comments? No, 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 go to, uh, no, go, go, go back, go back. Heart. Heart. Yeah, there you go, just. Uh, and then just start scrolling. There you go. All right. All right. I'm just gonna scroll and you're gonna say stop. Okay, ready? One. Two, three, stop. Three, who is it? Sasha. Is it a Jen. comment? No, no, you gotta look at comments on your most recent post. I was going to. And oh, I'm sorry. Because you need to reply to it or oh, else okay. people. Okay. I'm there's cynical again. people in the world that'll think you didn't pick somebody. So you need to reply on your Instagram okay, hold on. Let publicly. Me load, 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 load all the comments from this. Okay. Everybody Ready? posted Set. on the same spot. Go. Wait, wait. not yet, not yet. <laughs> Herman's making this too complicated. Maybe. No. There you go. Okay, there we go. All right, ready? One, two, three, stop. Chris718. Chris718, reply to it. Say you won. Just press reply to the comment. Chris718, you have won a pack of Euro, Neuro67 with Omega67. Okay, did we give away the mentor box? Mm, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do the laptop. Who wants a laptop? Laptop. Drop top. Herman, name this um, rap lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Drop top. That's all I'm going to tell you. That should be all you need. Don't say it, Kate. Drop top? Yeah. What modern hit rap song is that from? I'm not saying anything. Who, what artist did that? Eminem. Oh <laughs> my Eminem? Gosh, no. Okay, well, and what did, what did, what did, um, so, what do you say then? Oh, I have no idea. Ask, 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 I don't, ask the viewers. What is Kate, the... Kate, what, what band is that? I mean, what uh, group Kendrick is that? Kendrick Lamar. No. Zach um, only knows one rapper. Uh, Coolio. You got two. <laughs> I thought you knew more about rap. Uh, right? Run, run, run. Drop top. Run, uh, run, run, uh, DMC. No. Beastie Boys. 
What is it, Kate? Um, hold on. I feel like I just lost it now. <laughs> Kate. Mm, Biggie. Mm, Migos. Migos. Everyone's like, Migos. That was my next guess. That was my first guess. How does the whole thing go? Drop top. It's like, rain drop, drop top, da -da -da -da, on a hot box, <laughs> something like that. I thought that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's a thought thought. Herman, what is a thought? A thought? No, but T-H-O-T. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bring intellectual people on and ask them, <laughs> <laughs> ask them urban uh, vocabulary terms. Thought. T no, don't look it up. No, um, oh, he like, cheated. I saw no, that. No, I didn't. I was. He was on Instagram. Yeah, I was on Instagram. Thought. He was admiring so, all his so new followers. Small. No, I was te texting the Did guy you get a lot? Eh. Like what is it? Like 400. Follow Dr. Thought Fesco. Is a what? A thought. A girl is a thought if she does what? She's a loose woman. If she's fat. <laughs> <laughs> he said you if know? she's fat. No. <laughs> no. A thought, it stands for that hoe over there. It's like a, oh, a hoe. So if you're dating a girl and she's a thought, it's the kind of girl you can't trust. By the way, I read in an evolutionary psychology textbook today. The number one trait men in every society on planet Earth treasure above all things in a girl they would marry or date is what? Loyalty. You didn't give us any time to guess. Oh, because I'm giving you that <laughs> damn answer. Loyal, loyalty. So a thought is the opposite. A thought is everything that men from the Ashe tribe in Paraguay to, you know, Moscow, China, United States, everywhere you go. That is what Dr. David Buss's research found that men prime, it's like 95%. Did you tell Dr. Buss that Limbaugh had quoted him? Yes, I did. So women, I don't know what this means for you, but I do know that it probably means that if a man perceives you to be a thought, a loose woman, you're gonna have a hard time having high quality men stick around. They might sleep with you, but they ain't marrying you or dating you. That's what Dr. Buss says. If you wanna argue with that and say it's a societal construct, I don't think so. Cause he studied, studied Scandinavia, which is a much more feminist society and he found the same results. So yeah, thoughts. Thoughts are dangerous. Um, okay, let's do the laptop. Hi. Drop top. Ask them. You ready? I'll have a question for you. Okay. For the laptop. Herman, what, what's up? Herman, okay. More video What's your time? question? No, 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 you don't have to do a video. Okay, what's the question? the question? The question is? What is dopamine? What is dopamine? Hmm. Let's go, but that's a hard answer. What do we, like, the do chemical the, compound? No, part? no, what is, like, what is it? Like if you say. Yeah, but are you gonna come the, judge the answers? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Someone's saying go. chemical, a stimulant. No. No. Someone said neurotransmitter. Yeah, you have to have no. like a specific. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is dopamine? You can't win if you're there's, in this room. There's two words that I will accept. Well, are you watching, Herman? I can't. Well, I got the answer. Someone here. said it. Oh, somebody said Just it already. Your, oh, someone said that one? Yeah, someone. That's why I said the oh, word. Oh, here. Where, did you capture it already? Yeah, I captured it. Well, who was it? I, I can show you. All I right, said the word is, after. This doesn't count. This is a train wreck. <laughs> Herman is not allowed to do. Wait, that yeah, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Herman picked some vague no. ass no. thing. They, they could have said neurotransmitter or neurotransmitter. Here. No, we're not doing this. That was way too many. Oh, yeah. Herman, you have to look. Adrian has it. No, it's, it's okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Here we go. I'll ask another one. No, no, Herman is forever forbidden to You're deal with banned. any questions. You're banned from asking questions. All right, here's my question for you. This will go relatively quick. What was the name of the investment company in 1998 that went broke that was full of all the genius investors, but they made a mistake? What was their name? It's four words. Four words will win you a laptop, the first person who comes up with it. Four words, words, no acronyms, no, here we go. Uh, no, let me see, God, it's hard for me to see these. There we go, Brandon Larson. Someone might've said it earlier, but I couldn't. 
whoever said it, if you said it earlier, it's hard for me to look at four. Don't worry, I'm not biased. Brendan Carson. LTCO. Long term capital management. About five people popped it at once, but. That was the, that was the first. Wait, what is this you're showing me? Um, no, that it. LTCM is not it. Did you get the branding guy? Yeah, I got him. Yeah, it's Brandon. LTCM you couldn't say you couldn't say LTCM. I said uh -oh. I said no. Yeah, Brandon Larson. Brandon Larson, congratulations. <coughs> we going to send you a brand new laptop. Drop top. Do it. Was that our short shaker? No. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, all of you. It was great to have you. We are gonna head out. Thank you, Dr. Herman Garcia. You were Fresco. Right. Thank you, Kate. Uh, my, do my, my name. Thank you. Herman! Garcia Fresco. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the Zach song? I don't have one of those. That's an it's an instrumental song. All right. Thank Remember, you. You are your brain. It's not out yet. Talk to you guys soon. You can shut this off. How long was that?